Okay, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for your patience with technical difficulties. My name is Tammy Meltzer. I'm chair of Manhattan Community Board One, and this is the full board meeting for Manhattan Community Board One. I'm joined with my fabulous board members, and we always start with our public session. So let's open up. Tammy, I just texted you. Um, we also have a public hearing today, um, which we have to do after we'll do the public scene. So it'll be a public hearing and um, the budget after we do the public session for people who have signed in for other topics. Does anybody have any questions on that so far? Perfect. I like that. That will push me. So, Lucian, you here? I'm here, Jamie. Okay, great. So I'm just checking on the tabs to make sure that um, I can get everybody in. Okay. Looks like we have 26 members signed in. Okay. That's that's a good sign. And that's a reminder if you're a member of CB1 or a member of the public or government representative or anyone at all in this meeting, please take a moment and fill in the Google form that's on the live.mcb1.nyc page or through the link that I'm about to send you and make sure you're signed in just, just so we have a record that you're present. If you're a member of CB1, this is what we'll base your attendance on. So if you don't fill it out, we'll assume you're not here, even if you are. The other thing is when I call on people, I do not call by hands. You have to have been signed in to be recognized for attendance for being called on for the public session. So with that. Uh, I just asked Lucian a question about the sign in, Tommy. I'm sorry. You mentioned sure. it before, Lucian. When we till we logged on, I'm still confused. We I signed in and you had, I think one time you said that was sufficient. Do we need to go onto your link again? So. Sure, Mitch. Um, the uh, on the website we have a Google spreadsheet, a Google, a Google form. Um, that's what builds our database of sign-ins. Um, the second link, which is the link that launches WebEx, that's not the sign-in form. It only doesn't really capture anything that we need. Okay. Yeah. So, so you put the you link should, up again. Still, I'll I'll put the link in the chat. But you should definitely have one link. You 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 do one form to sign in, and that's like your name. It says you're a CB1 member. Uh, it has that, a committee. That, that's, what, that's what came up when I when I when I logged on to the link before. That's right. So that's the one you fill out for attendance, or if you wish to speak during the public session for this meeting in particular. The second link, which is the WebEx link, will launch, and you know it, the what you fill out essentially will populate the name field, so we know who we're talking to. If your camera's off, that's all. I'm sorry, I'm being stupid with this. So do I need to, I already did that. Do I, I don't need, so I need right. to fill out the link again that you're going to put on the chat, right? Let me, let me just check to see if you signed in um, in the, the Google check form. Because yeah, I'm, I'm going to never ask you this again. Link I is right. I'll, I'll, I'll chat you and I'll let you know, Mitch. Thank you. Sorry, Tammy. Okay, we're good. All right, so I have some speakers from the public signed up to speak. We're going to start with them um, and then after we go through that, we're going to open up the public hearing for the budget. And then we're going to close that and then we'll, we'll reopen the meeting um, into the budget session. I will um, note that I believe Congressman Nadler will be joining us this evening. So when we start the business session, we hope to start with Congressman Nadler. On that note, uh, for the public session, let's welcome Todd Fine. So if we can find Todd. And please remember, everybody gets two minutes. Can you find the top of the attendee section, please? Todd, I see you and you look like you're unmuted. If you are having audio issues, sign off, sign back on, and we'll recognize you then. It doesn't look like this audio is connected. 
Okay. Um, we'll, we'll go to Patrick Cannell. You're speaking as a member of the public today. Yes, on behalf of the Five Neighborhood Association. Fantastic. It, um, so, yeah, uh, so on behalf of the Finite Neighborhood Association, I wanted to urge our community board to adopt the very thoughtful and thorough resolution that was passed by the transportation committee this month um, regarding the John Street pedestrian and Titus school safety issues. Um, as most of the community board members know, <laughs> FDNA has long supported solutions, including possible shared streets and managed street programs to address uh, the many um, competing issues in the streets and the sidewalks of the financial district. By now, hopefully everyone's read the resolution and understands the very real and dangerous problem that's arisen on John Street, especially for the students of the Titus School. Through months of discussions with local stakeholders, including CB1 and the Transportation Committee, what's being proposed in this resolution is a long-term solution that serves the needs of the Titus School students, the staff, the residents in the immediate area along John Street, businesses and workers along that stretch, the pedestrians who use that sidewalk there, and drivers who face blocks long backups for as long as this issue remains unsolved. So to be very clear, a shared street would not close access to John or any of the other surrounding streets. And just manipulating parking res uh, regulations alone won't do the job, we know that. This is the best solution. And importantly, the neighborhood supports it and wants it. In addition to the FDNA, the boards at 80 John Street and 99 John Street, two of the largest residential condos on that stretch of John Street, support it. I understand um, from Natalie and the administrators that Titus have spoken to other residents and businesses, and there is resounding support. And this is one of those rare moments where you have the major stakeholders in the affected area, including the residents on that block, the local businesses, and the downtown alliance totally on board. So FDNA encourages the community board to vote yes on the current transportation committee resolution, not to amend it or water it down in any way. This is a time for action, no further meetings or conversations or studies. We need action for the interests of these students. I see my time's over, so thanks. Thank you, Patrick. Sorry, I was just about to cut you off. All righty, uh, moving along, we're gonna go to Taina Prado from the Downtown Alliance. He will be unmuted in just a moment. And Todd, fine, if you can still hear me, please log out and log back in because your audio does not seem like it's connected. Lucian, can you unmute? Diane is there. I see her. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you tell me again who who is who's being unmuted here? Diana Prado from Downtown Alliance. On mine, she's third from the bottom. Hello. Hi, how are you? Welcome. Good. Thank you so much. Um, happy to be here tonight with you guys. I usually see your faces, but I can't see anybody's face today. Um, I am here very quickly to share some uh, good news about a pilot program that the Alliance is launching November 1st. Um, downtowns and the city's first public composting pilot program. Um, it's being done in conjunction with the Department of Sanitation. Uh, in partnership with Brookfield, and the concept is that we're going to place eight to ten bins uh, at various locations in the Phi Dye District, uh, so folks will be able to dispose of their compost materials in the bins. We, of course, will manage them and empty them, um, and in the hopes of this, um, the program gaining momentum and, and people getting access to it. I was trying to send in the chat feature the link to where this lives on our website, um, but I can't seem to do that for some reason. I know you've been having some technical difficulties, but I will share the information with Lucian to share with everybody else. Um, we're actually having a community press event on November uh, tw uh, 12th, um, but the bins will actually be uh, put out uh, starting November 1st. Um, and on our website, when I share the link, it'll show the location. So there's one by Zuccotti Park, 
there's one on Pearl Street, there's one on Cedar Street. I mean, the locations were limited in where we can place them, but we um, have chosen locations where our existing big belly uh, bins are located. And we're hoping that this um, program is successful and we encourage, of course, the residents in the community to use them. And on the website, when, I, when you get it, um, you'll see what materials can go in and can go out of the bins. And the last, last piece I wanted to share is that this is a secure bin. And what you'd have to do is download an app become a member, it's free of course, and the app will allow you to open and close the bin to drop off, you know, to dump your your, your food waste inside uh, inside the bins. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to me at my email address, tprado at downtowny.com or our phone number 212-835-2783. Thanks so much. And I wanna say thank you very much. We are all super excited. Composting is something that this community board has very much supported and we appreciate your support of not only the business but the residential community in having those bins be on a larger scale so thank you all righty uh moving along we're gonna go to see if todd fine is able to get his audio working Lucian, can you check todd yeah, still don't see audio for Todd Fine. So if audio for Todd is not working, let's go to our elected representatives who are here with us. If you're an elected representative, could you go ahead and raise your hand? That allows us to find you much faster. Perfect. So if okay, we've got someone by phone. Are you elected representative phone phone person? Star okay. six amuse, I believe. This is Marion with Assembly Member Deborah Glick's office. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you just fine. I can. Uh, well, thank you, every. Well, thank you, everyone. I hope you remember me. I'm with Assembly Member Deborah Glick's office. Um, it's been a while, but I just wanted to check in and let you guys know that we're really excited to be back full time in the office. Um, the assembly member actually had a constituent tabling event where she wanted to let some of her constituents know that on November 2nd, there will be a ballot initiative. Um, some of you people already are voting because we know it's early voting, but we want you to know that on November 2nd, please be sure to look out for five ballot initiatives. So one ballot initiative involves redistricting, another one, no excuse absentee voting, and one for the right to clean air, clean water, and a healthful environment. So please remember to turn your paper over, um, do some research before you enter the ballot booth and vote on these initiatives they can change uh, the New York State Constitution if amended. And another uh, item that the assembly member has been working on in the district, just to let everyone know that we're still here. Uh, so she joined a City Hall Park. There's the um, City Hall Park, Friends of City Hall Park. Some of you guys know that Skip is uh, one of the founders there. So she joined them on October 20th to join in on some volunteer initiatives to uh, plant some balls and gardening activities. It was a really fun day. I joined her. Um, and I hope you guys will know that City Hall Park um, is being monitored and it's being cared for by some uh, dedicated volunteers. And we thank them for the efforts that they put into the park as we walk by it, going to some of our meetings um, in lower Manhattan. And lastly, we're a little excited. So the assembly member had one of her bills signed into law by the governor. It's kind of, it's a, it's a cool bill. And the bill requires courts to consider the best interests of pets in custody battles. So I know we care about the kids, but what about the pets? Um, so her bill was signed into law and we're excited about that. I hope you all have a good October and I look forward to joining you guys again for full board and some of the committee meetings. Again, it's Mariam with assembly member Deborah Glick's office. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Lucy. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I see you guys, but I'm on the phone. Happy October. <laughs> Thanks, well, Lucy. It's, it's lovely to hear from you as well. We look forward to seeing you more on camera when you're not on the phone and when we go back. Okay. <laughs> All righty. So next from uh, Mariam, we will move on to Cora Fung. 
from Council Member Chin's office. And after that, we'll go to office. Andy. I'll do a quick round up on the constituent side because this past month, CB1 and Lucian and also the Alliance downtown and a couple other agencies were all working together on multiple issues and it's more uh, the major issues as well. So we got together to work on the homeless shelter at 52 William Street. There was all these folks on Pine Street reaching out about that shelter uh, regarding sex offenders. We got the clarification from Department of Homeless Service so that's taken care of. So if anyone continue to receive any complaints or issues, please do send it to my office, at the council member's office, and then I will work with Lucian and Department of Social Services to get clarification. Uh, with 456 Granite Street, the hotel SLA application, we're part of that for the community engagement. Uh, Connect gas line repair work on White Street between Broadway and Church. And there is the Moxie Hotel lighting. Moxie's back reopened. The inside lighting continue to affect the people who live on Nassau Street and also on N Street. So in the last two, three weeks, we're working with DOB to try to see how we can find the middle ground for the residents and the Moxie new ownership. Uh, on the legislative side, with the New York Harbor School and the Trinity Place School, the future side of PS150, um, we have the PS150 school lunch issues. We will all work on that and um, work with the PDAs and the school principal and the board of education. So that's from me and please continue to stay safe and have fun for this Halloween. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next we're gonna welcome Amy Vera from Office of Assembly Member New. Amy? Can you hear me? I can. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, I hope everyone's having a good day and having a good evening now, despite the weather. Um, please stay safe, everyone. Um, so, just a few quick updates from Assemblymember New. Um, I just want to let you all know that the week of October, my apologies, November 8th, or the week after that, we're going to be holding a joint public forum with State Senator Brian Kavanaugh, Congressman Nadler, the Manhattan Borough President, um, Assembly Member New, and Council Member Margaret Chin regarding Five World Trade Center. Um, more information will be coming soon shortly, and we are excited to have you all there and hear everyone's opinions and comments and questions. Um, also, um, we just want to give an update. Um, today is day seven of the hunger strike um, for the taxi workers down in City Hall. Uh, Assembly Member Eileen has been partici participating since day one, and she encourages you all to look into this issue. Um, the taxi workers make up are made up of immigrants from all over New York City and due to the financial weight of the crumbling industry, they've been speaking out against the provisions of Mayor de Blasio and hoping for a relief program to put an end to the stop, put a stop <laughs> to the debt that they've been incurring and hopefully find relief. Also, uh, Yuleen just wanted to let you all know about the new opening of a building from Grand Street Settlement, 80 Pitt Street, it's gonna be a new renovated building coming in the next year, open to youth, elders, um, LGBTQ community, and everyone in the district. And we look forward to seeing you there when it's all ready and built. Thank you. Wow, thanks so much. That is perfect. Um, 
I think we are waiting for Gail as well, um, and that were President Brewer as well as Congressman Nadler. So, um, instead of calling on Andrew and Hannah, I believe we'll wait and see if they show. Um, so, uh, and Senator is here, we would be yeah. delighted to welcome him to go next. Welcome, Senator. Thank you. Move you over, Senator. One moment. All right. You can unmute yourself, Senator. Senator. And for the board members, please turn your cameras on. Thank you. Hi, folks. Welcome, Senator Kavanaugh. Hi, nice to see you on this non zoom format. It's very exciting. We have other media here. Um, great to be with all of you. Um, uh, just a few updates and happy to take questions. Um, first, I think uh, we are still, you know, we passed a lot of legislation in the first half of the year. Um, the latter half of the year is usually when the governor acts on most of these bills. We have many important pieces of legislation that our new governor is getting up to speed on, presumably, and her staff is trying to sort out whether to sign it. Uh, one a significant piece of legislation uh, that I passed with Assembly Member Rosenthal from uh, the Upper West Side is increasing the ability of the FEPS program. This is a voucher program that uh, is intended to keep people from being homeless. Um, and the state has artificially depressed the amount of money that those vouchers can uh, pay out for a while. Uh, Linda Rosenthal and I published an op-ed uh, in the Daily News urging the governor to sign this. Um, we ask you, I know this is a board that where a lot of folks have expressed a lot of concern about um, homelessness. Uh, you know, we urge you to join us in um, continuing to push for that. Um, and the op-ed again was published just, uh, it was in the, uh, on the 22nd, uh, it was officially published in the Daily News. Um, we are uh, also looking ahead toward uh, next year's legislative session. Um, we've got a lot of work to do, particularly um, on climate change, on implementing the uh, very ambitious goals of the housing stability, the, sorry, <laughs> um, the uh, Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act. Um, I've been working in particularly on questions about how to phase off, uh, phase this out of using natural gas, uh, which has been the uh, impetus for a lot of these major uh, infrastructure projects, including you know a pipeline that was proposed across the harbor and various other pipelines, vaporizers and other things in the New York area. Um, we do we do expect to have some additional announcements of legislation in the coming weeks that are intended uh, to address that. Um, just a quick housing update: the the uh, you know we have the COVID nineteen emergency rental assistance program is uh, still moving along. It has so far committed one point eight billion dollars. Uh, we are likely to exhaust the amount of money that would be two point. Um, it, we have a total of $2.85 billion for rental assistance, including some that is intended for tenants that have actually departed their apartments. Um, we do, there's, there, there's been some dispute about from the, with the state about whether we should continue to encourage people to apply for those programs. And I believe the answer is an unreserved yes, because we will not really know the full uh, need until we have, you know, applications so we can assess who's eligible and how much rent they, rent assistance they need. Uh, we will be pushing for additional money um, from the federal government or from the state budget or both uh, come January uh, when we're back in session. Um, the, uh, there's a similar program for, that's supposed to help homeowners uh, that has not yet been approved by the U.S. Treasury Department. Um, that is a, it's a different process where the states were supposed to submit a formal plan to Treasury. New York State submitted that on the very first day that we were eligible uh, to, to apply and has yet to hear from our U.S. Treasury Department about how, to, how we can spend $540 million of federal assistance for homeowners on mortgages and taxes and other things. Uh, we are still pushing um, and joining our congressional uh, delegation and pushing for Treasury to get that approved. Uh, we've been assured by the state housing agency that they can begin um, accepting applications and processing them within a week of approval from Treasury, uh, but we do need that. A uh, more local uh, housing update that was just mentioned by uh, uh, my colleagues from the assembly, uh, but we are working with uh, you know folks from this board and community on the question of affordability at Five World Trade Center, um, and it's it's a group effort of all the elected officials, including Congressman Armin Adler and uh, President Brewer and uh, Assemblyman Renew and uh, Councilmember Chin. 
uh, and others. And you know, we have reiterated to ESD and LMDC and the Port Authority uh, that we really do want to see more than 25% affordable. Uh, we are working on uh, with the community about creating that forum that was just mentioned, and we will have follow up, and we will help. We do hope that uh, the community board and members can actively participate in that. Um, the just a couple other quick local things. Um, I recently had the opportunity to tour uh, the space around the Brooklyn Bridge, the very extensive multi-acre space that is largely used for um, municipal DOT storage and equipment. There's also currently a lot of construction going on around there. Um, we are looking to see what we can do to help um, make some of that space available. Um, obviously, we would appreciate input from the community board on that issue as well. Um, the, uh, I think I will stop there with these updates. Um, just to say also, obviously the congestion pricing conversation is ongoing. Um, we will be, uh, you know, we are uh, talking about uh, what kind of exemptions are possible. You know, we the statute set broad parameters and, uh, you know, the, this public process is supposed to determine uh, some of the details now. So um, I encourage anyone who has not participated in that process or expressed their concerns or opinions about that to go forward. I will say for the record that I'm a very strong supporter overall of congestion pricing, but uh, we do still have some need to get uh, some of those details right. Um, I think I'll stop there and just go ahead and we have a very busy um, agenda and see if there are any questions or comments. Uh, let's see if we have any hands up for you. Um... We do have a very detailed resolution that we passed on congestion pricing. I'm happy to share it with right. you again. Um, we, of course, support the borough president's ask for somebody from Manhattan to be on it. We would counsel and say lower Manhattan, of course. Yeah, I also, I, I, I should say I also signed on to that. I formally signed on to that request with the borough president as well. And I think, I think it should be somebody from within the zone at least. Exactly. Okay, so let's see if I have hands up from board members. I have a hand Hi. up to Mitch. I, yes, I, yes. I, I saw your hand. Recognize, I'm sorry. Recognizing you, Mitch. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, Senator Kavanaugh. Hello. Hi. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to bring something up again that I had brought to your office a while ago. For the people, uh, the snafu as far as with the ERAP program, which is a great program, but the, uh, the snafu is the people that were getting pandemic, the PUA, which has now ended which enabled them to pay the rent so they wouldn't get in trouble with their landlords. Now, the ERAP program they're not eligible for because while they are qualified for everything else under the program, because they struggled to pay the rent and now are struggling to pay the rent because the PUA stopped, they're, 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 they're barred from the ERAP program because they tried to do the right thing. So I ask you that for people that were eligible for the PUA that still have not had their, their uh, uh, their work uh, reestablished for, for, for different reasons, if they could be included in the ERAP program because uh, uh, they tried to do the right thing with the PUA money. No, okay, so just there are two different, I may not be understanding, but I think there are two related but distinct questions there. Um, the first is if you paid your rent, even if you yes. struggled to pay your rent, whether you used PUA or savings or right. I don't know, max out your credit cards or whatever, the current federal source here, the, 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 the source of 2.6 billion of that $2.85 billion cannot be used for rent that is not due. So if you paid the rent, even if you struggled to pay it, we cannot reimburse out of that money. No, I'm not um, asking about reimbursement. But no, no, I, just to, I just wanted to make that clear. Brent, but I understand that. If you had a loss of income and you have rent arrears, uh, you should be eligible. So I'm but not the, sure. The, the problem is, is rent arrears. People like myself that are trying to do the right thing and going to their life savings or whatever, I'm saying that the, having to have rent arrears and getting into a situation with your landlord, and and it, that's the snafu where you should be eligible if you should if you, you qualify economically, uh, as as opposed to having to wait to owe the landlord money and then uh, you know trying to to have arrears. I don't disagree with you in principle, and I actually, I had written, as some of you know, I had started writing legislation I thought should be the legislation to cover rent arrears, and I would have paid 
the difference. I would have paid the difference between 30% of your income and your rent, even if you had managed to scratch together enough money to cover your rent during those periods. Um, right. I, under the federal law that allocated this money, if you don't, if you paid the rent and don't owe it, the, the program, the program allows us to pay rent arrears and for people who are qualified, some prospective rent, but it does not three months of prospective rent. It does not allow us to reimburse tenants for rent they have already paid. Well, I understand that because moving forward, if you can consider that as we move forward for future bills for like for people I, that still aren't, I aren't agree businesses. With, like I again I agree with you in concept and again I okay. people who scrap I and again I, I wrote a bill that literally would literally wrote the bill that would have done that. And then, but then we modified it as the federal legislation came out, and it is challenging. The federal, like rent that was like rent that was, it's, it would be a challenging thing to go re sort of recreate the past. So I understand the constraints when the federal bill was written, but just for what it's worth, we cannot pay. We are we are at the state level cannot make those payments. If there, if there's any chance you think you might be eligible in some way, I'd be happy to work with you to try to figure that out, though. But maybe but we should talk about your case individually and see if there's any way to get you some relief. Exactly. Let's take that offline. I have two other hands up. Let's go to three other hands up. Let's we're gonna go in this order. Colin, Rosa, and Mariama. Hi, Sarah. You're welcome. Hi, Senator. Uh, just a quick question on congestion pricing. Oh, Tommy. Oh, Jesus Christ. Joe, you'll wait. I'll catch you afterwards. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you, Colin, Rosa, Mariama, then Joe. Just very quick for the senator on congestion pricing, as you probably know, London, Paris, and Rome all had considerable success with incentivizing electric vehicles under their congestion plans. I wonder if you had considered that, or if you would consider that, and if not, why not? Thanks. We discussed it when we did the statute. Um, I think that there was, was some concern, not necessarily my concern, that uh you would have lots of people in teslas and other things uh continuing to create a great deal of congestion and part of the point was to avoid congestion not just for the individual car not just for individual vehicles but the sort of overall impact of congestion like if if i'm stuck behind a tesla i'm still idling in my gas powered car so um i i don't think i wouldn't rule it out and we can modify I will just say, like, we passed congestion pricing. It's now two years ago, more than two years ago. Part of the deal, the, it's a simple fact that the Trump administration would not do the things, the federal things necessary to authorize this. So we're kind of, we had expected a lot of the conversations we're having now to have happened, you know, a while back with a quicker implementation. I think the legislature has an opportunity to revisit the statute. And I, I would consider additional incentives. Uh, and I'll talk with my colleagues about that. And there are, there are some legislators that are introducing bills about particulars of this to modify the work we did in 2019. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to talk to you about another point. I won't take up time here, but London saw an increase of over 65% of electric vehicle adaptation uh, about six years after the first congestion pricing plan went in place in 2002. So it's obviously a great way to ensure yeah, people. Why, I, yeah. Yeah, why don't we follow up with you and I'll hear, we'll talk about it more. Great, thanks. Thanks, thanks Colin. Rosa, you're next, then Mariama, then Joe. And when you're done, please take your hands down. Thanks so much. Hi, Senator Kavanaugh. Um, thank you so much for coming by the site tour of the Brooklyn Bridge Manhattan Park. Um, we are excited to be able to have your support to make that project a reality for our community because we so desperately need some outdoor space. So I, I just want to say you thank as the you. the person who'd done the tour. I just thought, I thought you would, <laughs> I would let we, you decide. We all know, don't worry. We're I good. Care. <laughs> I don't know. I just like <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I just want to say thank you very much for coming and we look forward to working with you to make that happen. Great. Thank Take you. Take care. Thank you, Rosa, Mariama, and then Jeff. Hi, Senator. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you as well um, for mentioning the forum with regard to Five World Trade Center and for offering to host the forum in the first place. And to also say about the ERAP, that the problem is it's advertised as a program that people are eligible for if they had a loss of income or reduction in income as a result of COVID. It doesn't necessarily uh, let you know in the beginning that you also have to be behind in your rent. 
So people are applying thinking they're eligible and they're going to get some relief going forward, not reimbursement, but going forward because they've had a loss of income or reduction in their rent. That doesn't necessarily mean that they have not paid their uh, reduction in their income rather. That doesn't mean that they haven't paid their rent, but when they finally do need the help because of these losses, then they're told after the fact, after they apply, that they're not eligible because they don't also have arrears. That's the I, program. Okay, I appreciate that. I, I can talk to OTDA about clarifying that more easily up front. I will say that this has been extraordinarily challenging because the state's rollout of the program was such a mess that yeah. there was a couple of months where you know, you know what people were being told was the least of our problems when they got 120,000 applications in the first month and processed none of them. And so, so we have gotten to the point where they are at least moving through applications and getting money out the door. Uh, but uh, I will, uh, we will take a look and see if we can clarify that front so people don't. Thank you. And I, as you may know, I also have a number. I've been pushing a number of things that are intended to subsidize rent to keep people stably housed, including the housing access voucher program and a hundred million dollar program we put into the budget uh, last year that I'm trying to figure out if OTDA managed to do anything with. But this is going to be ongoing. We are at the beginning of a new five-year capital plan for housing, but we also have been continuing to push for uh, rental subsidy and like making sure that we are spending adequate amounts so that people are not without homes because of an inability to pay. And that's a, that's a goal I have across the state. I heard something was on the way for co-ops and condos too. So I'm excited about that. As well. Yeah, well, let me, uh, I mentioned that just the, from my perspective, ERAP should be the, the COVID-19 emergency rental assistance program should be covering co-op uh, maintenance arrears, but the state has said that that is not legally permissible, and I think they're wrong, and I've told them so, but this housing program, the, the homeowner program should be co covering co-ops and condos, and again, I believe the state is ready to implement that, but we need the Treasury Department to act, so again, we will be ratcheting. We've already been in touch with our some members of our congressional delegation. And we will be ratcheting up the pressure for the Treasury Department to approve that so that program can get out the door. Thank you very much. Uh, Joe, you're next. Uh, so I assume you're supporting the bill as written. Is that correct on congestion pricing? I mean, the bill as written was passed two years ago and I voted for it. Now, so, uh, what happens if they give the police department exemptions but not to no lower Manhattan residents. Will you still be in favor of that bill? Okay, I don't. I don't get to go back and you know retract my vote from two years ago. But we certainly get to discuss modifications, statutory modifications that we need to. So we will be looking at how it's implemented and considering that. I think that uh, the bill require, as I as I recall, it requires uh, ex it requires discounts or exemptions for emergency vehicles for uh, vehicles transporting people with disabilities and for people who live in a zone who make less than $60,000 household income and then permits other exemptions. So this is gonna be an ongoing conversation. If we don't like the results, again, just to be clear, we don't get to pass the bill just based on the opinions of uh, representatives of Manhattan. We would need a consensus of, you know, uh, a majority of each house of the legislature, but we'll, we will be looking at what is decided. And if we don't like it, we can consider legislating. Well, if you don't like it, uh, if it, if it includes no exemptions for people downtown, yet it includes exemptions for police, fire and whoever, will you, uh, fight against it? Again, I don't it's favor. Yes or no, Mr. Senator. Sorry, I, I think I'll uh, you get to ask questions and I get to have sentences to answer them. I do not favor a 100% exemption for anybody who lives in the zone because that I think that would gut the program. Uh, there's you know hundreds of thousands of people living in the zone and I don't think that the answer is that those folks should be able to drive in and out as they please. Uh, whereas somebody who lives immediately on the other side of a bridge can't you know, come into a neighborhood where they may they may have important business and has to pay. I think we do need to balance the needs of local residents and people who live in the zone and recognize the fact that if you live in the zone, you're affected by this in a different way than if you're affected than so, if you don't live in the zone. Senator, we I have a follow up, please. Um, 
Um, so um, now I forgot. Just give me a second. While well, Joe's thinking about it, I would say, Senator, we have a very detailed resolution. We'd be delighted to have a discussion with you and have you come to a committee meeting and talk to us about it. There are many concerns that are related with that. We are in support of congestion pricing. We would love electric vehicles. We'd love electric boats. There's many things that we would love to be supportive of, of this legislation. There's also lots of concerns. And I think one of the things that Joe highlights is our concern that um, much of the congestion on our streets are due to placards. A significant portion because of who we are in community board one, the level of government offices down here and administrative. So, yeah, and you and I, I think you and I have had some time to talk about the placard abuse and it is a serious problem. I recognize it's a serious so problem. Um, the feeling of the community that if you don't pay to commute because you get an exemption and then you don't pay and you get to park wherever you want, including in truck loading zones, apartment loading zones, you get where we're going. I respect that. If you ever want to address the placard abuse, I, I hear that we could do it by diminishing the need to the. Uh, we could just say, well, since placard abuse happens so much, we will at least not give them free uh, transit into the zone. I, we should also address placard placards directly. And the only way to do that, I think, would be to create some independent enforcement authority that's sole purpose is to ticket those vehicles of uniformed officers it's it's been very hard to get uniformed officers to ticket vehicles that of their colleagues and so but again i i agree with you we should we should take a hard line on that and figure it out maybe the new mayor or administration and we look former police that. officer will help but I, like and i will follow up with you on the details of your resolution as well okay. my my question is are there any surveys about point of origin vehicles within Lower Manhattan that stay in Man Lower Manhattan? My point being is, I think people in, in Lower Manhattan drive to get out of the business district. They would not drive to within the business district. They Correct. Would. And so there you're punishing people who would take in a vehicle and maybe go on to Brooklyn or wherever uh, when yes. they're not part of the problem. So we will have the Senator come and talk to us about all of this. I, some I, of this I, and I appreciate, Joe, I appreciate yeah. your thoughts. I will let, let's follow it up. Let's have a more, a, a fuller conversation. And I will, we'll, we'll. Let, okay. let's have a survey of point of origin to destination of vehicles in lower Manhattan. Tammy, okay. can I quickly add to your point? Uh, um, to say that when you. Mariama, you've already gone. There's one more hand. I apologize. We're going by Robert's rules. And with respect, we have two other elected officials on the line. So okay. it's about the pla reporting the placards. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, I apologize, but we've got to, you know, let the next person go um, because it is still part of the public session. We haven't closed it. So Jill Goodkind. Hi, and hello, Senator. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, I want to also thank you for um, hosting and organizing the Five World Trade Center Forum and just want to emphasize part of the importance for this is that the community has not had a forum or a place to present their position. The uh, community has had short periods of time just to react to numerous presentations by um, you know, Port Authority and LMDC, et cetera. Uh, and so that's always been reactive for the community. This will be the first time where the community can really present their views. And that's extremely important. And I thank you for that. Okay, good. I appreciate that. And we are talking with a number of people in the community uh, about uh, format and making sure that this is a genuine exchange of views where they you know, the views of the, the very strongly held views of many people in our community are, uh, you know, a very prominent. And also, obviously, we hear, we get the, we figure out what the agencies are saying and make sure they're, they have an opportunity to react so we can hear on the record what they're saying, what they're saying yeah. in response. Yeah. To just, just to reiterate, we've heard what they're saying at, I think, three, maybe four meetings in detail with slides, with presentations. They have presented their side numerous times, but the community really has not had that opportunity. Okay, thank okay. you. 
We'll have Thank a forum. You. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. I appreciate this very much. Um, Congressman Nadler is with us and he arrived next. So we're going to go Congressman Nadler and then our esteemed borough president, Gail Brewer, will end our public session. Then we're going to go into our budget hearing, just so everybody knows, um, which is a public session. It will open, it will close, and then we will do our uh, business session moving forward. So welcome, Congressman Adler. Thank you so much for your patience. Well, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you. The Democrats in Congress are working with the administration to pass two major pieces of legislation, the infrastructure and reconciliation bills. While the final versions are being negotiated, I wanted to highlight some crucial areas in both bills that I think would be of interest uh, to uh, CB1. The Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, also known as the Bipartisan Infrastructure Framework, or we affectionately call it the BIF, contains a major investment in our physical infrastructure. Nationally, that includes $110 billion in new funds for roads, bridges, and major projects, $39 billion in new funds for public transit, $66 billion investment in passenger and freight rail, and $50 billion for climate resiliency projects. That translates into a lot of money for New York. New York will receive $11.6 billion for federal aid highway apportioned programs and $1.9 billion for bridge replacement and repairs, $10.5 billion for the MTA, and $3.6 billion to prepare New York infrastructure for the impacts of climate change, cyber attacks, and extreme weather events. Plus, billions more spread out across various programs on broadband, electric vehicle charging, water systems, and others. I'm also fighting to make sure we, we pass the Build Better Act, the Reconciliation Bill, which is the core of the President's agenda. The exact contours of the bill are evolving rapidly, but I'm continuing to advocate this package includes the following provisions. Lowering the cost of child care and providing universal pre-K for three and four-year-olds nationwide, expanding Medicare lower prescription drug prices, and to include vision, dental, and hearing benefits, strengthening the Affordable Care Act, making investments in home and community-based care, creating long overdue paid family and medical leave policy in the United States, uh, funding two years of tuition-free community college, meaningfully uh, tackling the climate crisis with support for frontline communities and clean energy, investing in affordable housing and providing capital funding to repair uh, our, public, our public housing. The reconciliation bill is our opportunity to make strategic investments in affordable housing, health care, child care, paid leave, and climate action that we'll feel for generations to come. We'll continue to push for these crucial policies at the federal level and look to our state and local partners uh, to do the same. The Judiciary Committee, uh, the House Judiciary Committee, which I'm chairman, has also been quite active since I last spoke to CB1. We have passed bills to protect voting rights, a suite of bills to lower prescription drug costs and increase access to hard to find drugs through changes to patent laws, reform our immigration system to make, to at least make some sense, combat hate crimes and much more. In the House, we passed the Women's Health Protection Act. We continue to fight to protect abortion rights across the country. On a local level, we continue to push for expanding affordable housing at Five World Trade Center and prohibiting non-essential helicopter flights from operating, which would help improve safety and cut down on noise pollution. I'm going to leave it there for now, but I'm happy to uh, answer any questions. Thank you very much, Congressman Nadler. I am looking for hands up. Second. Hands are coming. We're going to go Rosa Chang. And then Jill Goodkind. Rosa, you're first. Thank you. Hello, Congressman Nadler. Um, thank you very much. I actually just wanted to take this opportunity to introduce you to a new project called Brooklyn Bridge Manhattan. <laughs> and ask you if you would like to uh, take a tour of this new nine acre park that we would like to have that hopefully would also be um, 
able to participate in some of that infrastructural spending that you were just talking about, um, since it does actually deal with the Brooklyn Bridge resiliency and equitable access to open space for our um, for our communities. So just putting the invitation out there since we have okay, this we'll see if we can work it out with the schedule. Excellent. Thank you. We'd be happy to take you on a tour. Very, Alrighty. very happy. <laughs> Um, Jill, you. you're next, please. Well, Uta, actually, I forgot to take it down, but since I got called on, I just want to say thank you very much, Congressman, for what you're doing and the things that you're fighting for are so essential to us. Um, you've got strong support here, at least from me, and I appreciate it. And, and please keep up the good work and remember Five World Trade Center. Well, thank you very much. And we're certainly very in working on Five World Trade Center. Thank you, Jill. We're moving to Mimi Flynn. Hi, I'd like to piggyback on what Rosa was saying um, in regards to the park um, and say that we also need public restrooms for everybody. Uh, so, you know, if that's interesting at all to you, uh, we need them. Everybody's got to go. Thank you. That's certainly true. Exactly. All righty. I think um, I don't see any other hands up. So I want to say thank you very much, Congressman Nadler. Thank you for your advocacy always and supporting Community Board One. And we are very grateful that you take the time to come to our meetings. Um, if for no other reason, knowing that you're probably in DC, if we kept virtual and we could have you, that's fantastic. So thank you for coming. Well, you're quite welcome. I enjoy coming. All righty. That brings us to Manhattan Borough President Brewer, who I believe is with us as well. Thank yep. you, Tammy. Thank you very much. Um, also, I want to say I love my Brooklyn Bridge tour. That was awesome. And I also want to thank the congressman for, with other members of Congress, helping us to get this helicopter bill passed, packing it onto the infrastructure. I don't know. We've tried everything. We have tried working with New Jersey. So we've got a lot of elected officials and all the Manhattan officials signed on to a letter about the tourism. And let's see if it makes any difference because both states have had it. And then second, um, we want to curtail, as uh, Adrian Benepe and others agree, those that are traveling out to East End. So there's just many, many ways that we're trying to curtail helicopters, but without the federal legislation, it's hard. I also want to thank everybody who's working on Five World Trade Center, including Senator Kavanaugh. Um, I've had several conversations with the state about it, and certainly, agree we want affordable housing. I know there are many other issues, but that's my number one. Congestion pricing, just to pick up on what you're saying, the part that I've been playing, and I think CB1 knows this, I am adamant that somebody who is a transportation local community board member be on the, whatever it's called, committee that's gonna look at, trans at the congestion pricing. I do think our voice needs to be loud and clear. So I think the board knows that we're working on that and we're not gonna, I think we'll get it, so that's important to me. Um, this is Manhattan week for the mayor, as you may know. So my understanding, sometimes hard to get all the data and all, all the information and what is exactly Manhattan week. But I know there was a discussion this morning at his briefing about uh, resiliency, particularly in board one and uh, the amount he's allocating quite a bit of money to the South Street Seaport Financial District to make it resilient. There's many, much more needed, but just so you know, that's part of Manhattan Week. And then at John Jay College from 2 to 5 p.m., there's a resource fair, also part of Manhattan Week. Um, so that's, um, there are other aspects of the week, but I think the resiliency money is certainly helpful. Um, I also want to mention something fun. Uh, Rob Snyder, as you know, is the Manhattan historian. You should have him come if you haven't because he's an extraordinary uh, historian of many levels, but he is doing and just got a big award for it from the archives uh, roundtable. The COVID-19 documentarian project. And what it is, it's going to be a single repository of all New York City aspects of COVID. So it's not the items of any kind, but it's what it entailed in terms of the people and the uh, groups that worked on it. So he's collecting all of this and um, he's the kind of person who can do it. So if you have any interest, let me know if you want to participate. I also want to mention in terms of historic, 
Um, we had hundreds and hundreds of people show up for the maps, the 1811 maps at our open house New York uh, venue uh, on Columbus Day weekend. I just want to thank everybody who did participate. And this coming up for Thanksgiving, like everyone else, we're getting tons and tons of turkeys and we will be giving them out along with all the COVID related, which we still need the masks and we still need sanitizer. Um, just in terms of quickly some other things, thank you those who've been participated in the community board leadership training series, which Rosie and April are working on. They've been very successful. Today we had your favorite topic, state liquor authority mapping. Um, and I want to thank Beta NYC and also I know that people came from board one and I appreciate it. So thank you. And there are many more coming up. So just check our website, everything from uh, conflicts of interest board training, maybe not your favorite, but certainly relevant. And there are many, many others, new member courses, crash course, et cetera, et cetera. The New York State Redistricting <laughs> Commission, which has nothing to do with me, but has a lot to do with our city. The hearing for Manhattan is Wednesday, November 10th. Our, uh, the New York State Independent Redistricting Commission will show their draft plans and take testimony. It's incredibly important. I know you hear about open meetings all the time, but we have to organize for January 15th. This seems to be working pretty well. So this would be an example of maybe what you want to continue or not or hybrid uh, with your owl, which I know you paid for, you want to get reimbursed. I'm very aware of all that, but the, so you know, I know. And I just want to let you know uh, every Tuesday at three, we had one today, we have a discussion about either the vaccine situation or what is going on with federal money coming to New York. Today was a really good discussion about drug treatment and where it, uh, funding is going and what what is the status of that. And of course, like everybody else, we want to make sure that the attorney general money that he gave that she gave to the mayor is is uh, correctly spent. Um, my understanding is a board has to be appointed and it won't happen until January, but it's two hundred and forty six million dollars for the uh, city of New York. I want to say uh, composting is going better because we've been harassing people to sign up. I know my block is signed up and we're starting November 1st. So make sure that you sign up. Those are some of the issues. Um, 250 Water Street, I think is perhaps your most controversial topic. I can't think of anything more controversial, but it is had a hearing and had a hearing, as you know, at the city council, and we will see where it goes from there. Uh, you know that I care about the museum, so I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, Tammy. Thank you very much, Gail. Let's see, um, there are hands up. I did see Todd Fine has had his hand up. And since we are still in the public session, Todd. Yes, hello, uh, I'm Todd Fine. I'm president of the Washington Street Advocacy Group, uh, which advocates for public art and historic preservation in the Little Syria neighborhood. And I wanted to alert a CB1 that uh, some people will be testifying at Community Board 5 um, in a week about uh, the statue proposed for Elizabeth Jennings Graham. Some people may know as part of the She Built NYC uh, monument process for the mayor's uh, Shirlane McRae, uh, they, they announced a statue to uh, the Rosa Parks of New York City, who was thrown off a streetcar in 1854. That actually took place in CB1 in um, at Chatham Square, Park Row in that area, uh, not far from the municipal buildings. And instead, the city wants to propose it at a Grand Central Terminal because of sort of this loose link to transportation. So CB5 is finally going to have a, a discussion of this topic of whether it belongs perhaps in CB1 rather than CB5. And I think that's something, I know they, the, the, this board hasn't discussed that yet, but I think it's something to be really important that so much African-American history is really rooted in lower Manhattan. Um, and that's also true for a monument proposed for the Lyons family. Anyway, I, I want to alert people to that. And the, uh, this, the, and I'll, I'll be, the other issue related to that is in th for three years, we will have 400 years since the so-called purchase of uh, New York, you know, by the Dutch. Um, hello? Oh, sorry. And uh, that's, that's also an opportunity to think more about monuments, signage. There've been so many issues and I, I encourage CB1 to go back to that, especially within the diversity frame that was thought of last year. Thank you. Wait a second, I lost my meeting. Joe, 
Do you hang on? Rosa Chang has her hand up for Gail, and I apologize. Uh, Todd was supposed to have asked um, a question for Gail. Rosa, do you have a question for Gail? I just, I just want to say thank you again for coming on the tour. We really loved having you, and we are looking forward to working with you on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rosa. <laughs> Okay, um, I think those are all the questions that we have, Gail. I don't see thank any you. other things up. Thank you very so, much. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for coming, as always, uh, Madam Borough President. Thank you. Okay. So, with that, and since Todd has gone, we're going to close the public session in its entirety at 708. We're going to open up the public hearing for the budget. Um, and see if anybody has any comments, questions, or input and things to say about our budget as proposed. Todd, I am going to assume that your hand is still up from, yep, he's just taking it. Okay. So do I have any board members at this point for public comment? Hearing no board members and no members of the I have board. my hand up. Uh, oh, Mark. Do you? Okay, yeah. Mark. Uh, can you check? For, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to review, but we went over this in the waterfront committee for regards to adding uh, that funding. The uh, it's, it's it's from previous budgets that we just carried over funding for the uh, Brooklyn Bridge Beach uh, unfettered access issue. Is that it? Did we add that? The borough president reported out uh, to us that the Brooklyn Bridge Beach is secured. What? So the only thing that would be in the budget is continued. And remember, this budget is for 2023. Right. So the funding is there for that, but was it, is the funding was the funding appropriated as to how we wanted it uh, built? Do we know uh, that? We I don't know the answer that we have to look. I can see so, that. um, so this, so the budget wouldn't be the venue to follow up on that, but can we follow up on that? Mark. Cora has her hand up and can probably answer part of that because council member Chin and borough president. Went together on this, so let's have Cora unmute, please. Cora. And then Paul has his hand up. I see him waving at me. Cora. Lucian, can you unmute Cora? Sure thing. Hi, Cora. Thank you, Lucian. It's just a mistake. I wasn't able to tell whether or not that's a hands up or hand down with that icon. It's hands what? up, I see you. So is it up or down? I couldn't tell. But it was up, it's now down. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. It's just a mistake. Okay, perfect. Then I will leave that be. Do we have any other public comments about budget? I had my hand up, but I'm not sure that the system seems to have changed. And so the hand is difficult to do. So if you were looking for your hand. I was too. Then you go under the reactions and there's a nice little thing that says raise hand. Once you tap it once, it raises your hand. And then to lower your hand, it flips to lower. Then you tap lower and your hand goes down. I don't see any reactions. Do you see a little smiley face with a plus uh, at the bottom? I do. Yes, no, yes. There you go. Click that. Okay, got it too. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Paul or Jeff, did you have anything you wanted to add at this point? I did want to add something. Um, we realize that uh, the Seaport Museum is asking for a couple of items that we didn't take up in committee. So I'm recommending that the board add them to our list. One is for restoration of the historic Skirmahorn Row area, which has been closed since Sandy and they want to reopen it so they could re use it for their exhibits. And they do have some funds for that, but they need millions more. 
So that's the first item. Second item is the light ship Ambrose, which yes. again is a capital item for restoration. They apparently have most of the money, but they're looking for, I guess, continued support because they think the funding may not be adequate. Sounds fine. To, I mean, these are all things we have supported before. I don't see them as being any issue to add in. Diana, can you take some detailed notes so we can make sure we have that for the reserve? Thank you. Okay, that brings us to Mr. Galloway. Uh, yeah, it's just a technical question. Um, when I went to the link, it, it, two things were circulated on the budget. One was the PDF, and the other right. was the link to the um, spreadsheet that's on the on the website. The spreadsheet for an, for several items has some annotations that I don't understand. So, for example, next to Harbor School Pool, there's an annotation that says will modify. Um, and next to affordable housing in Battery Park City, there's an annotation that says specificity required. And there's a, a handful of other specificity requires. Should we care about that? Does it mean that this is going to be changed in some way before it's Submitted, or do we have to do something before we can submit it? What does that signify? Oh, Jeff, the, the, those, uh, those were ways that the staff, um, we've made those sorts of indications to allow us to try to find more information to make things more specific when the agencies kind of required more specificity, uh, in our experience. And so those, those sorts of, uh, uh, uh notes don't get passed along to, um, okay. So you'll make whatever changes you think are necessary in order to make those requests effective. Yeah, yeah. well, we, we discussed those at the executive committee meeting. We, we made those changes. So those notes have been resolved okay. effectively. Yeah, that, that was it. Thank you. My pleasure. Anybody else hands up. Public session. So I think with this, we will close the public hearing portion on the CB1 uh, budget request for 2023. Hearing no objections to that, let's close that session out. Let's get our agenda up and start our business session. So again, as we do the business session, please remember if you are a member of the public, unfortunately you will not be recognized during a business session. And if you are a public member that happens to be um, in as a participant, please be respectful and know that uh, we can't call it, sorry. All right, um, let's do adoption of the September 2021 minutes. Do I hear, um, we'll do it by affirmation. So let's hear any no's, any abstentions, any recusals. Okay, September minutes passed. Brings us to Mariama, you're up. Our treasurer, fantastic. Mariama. Sorry about that. I, I had a medical procedure right before the meeting and I just put my turn my camera off for a second to get a bite to eat. I apologize. Um so uh, this month we had some expenditure well allocations out of um what were already set aside from um the budget to go towards street fairs. So like an investment in future street fairs to come, although we had no um revenue from those street fairs yet. There was a, um, Daron, the chair, did call a meeting of the street fairs task force and um, is preparing to have some fairs in the future, hopefully something with the holiday market. So that's what we spent on. And that's really about it. Um, you were at last month's meeting, then you heard the um, borough president say that the city was now going to be, or perhaps her office directly, I don't remember which one it was, I'm going to be paying for owls for each of the boards. It probably was her office. <laughs> and I asked, <laughs> I asked if we would, we could be reimbursed because we already purchased our own out of the budget. And she said she'd look into it. So I understand from Lucian, uh, who has followed up on that, that they are trying to, you know, locate a mechanism where we could either be reimbursed or her office would purchase something um, for us of equal value so that it's like a, you know, a net zero um, expenditure for us. And that's it. 
perfect. And just to give you an update as of borough board Thursday, that was the same answer. So you're absolutely current and up to date. Alrighty. Okay, does anybody have any questions for our treasurer? Seeing no questions, let's move on. Lucian, you're up. I'm here. Hello, everyone. Um, greetings. I'm Lucian Reynolds. I'm the district manager of Manhattan Community Board One. Um, so, October is the end of our budget request process, but it isn't the end of the discussions around the city budget for fiscal year 23. We must keep engaging with our municipal delegation of elected officials and to advocate for our priorities. So I'm going to find opportunities for that and we'll work together with Tammy um, to the office work together with Tammy and Alice to make sure that we uh, make we take advantage of any opportunity to reinforce those priorities. Um, speaking of, of uh, the budget, a big thanks to Diana for all her help with managing our budget effort every year. It is always a big lift, but uh, teamwork makes it happen, especially with just working through all the things in the database and we really comb through everything this year, um, trying our best to uh, not let the agencies have any wiggle room uh, with rejecting any request. Um, we want to get these locked in and um, the worst thing is for them to try to knock us out on a technicality. So tracking that through the database helps helps us sharpen these every year. Um, there's a lots of uh, there's a lot of Groundwork this month on the groundwork. Uh, Cora Fung from Councilmember Chin's office and I inspected a haunted house to give them suggestions on how to avoid quality of life issues, uh, however possible. Um, we really um, did our best to to take everything that we've learned um, through the, uh, the the licensing process and, and just let them know um, they weren't getting a liquor license, so they didn't have to come to us. But they did reach out to to ask if there are ways that they could do better, and so. Um, yeah, we told them everything we knew, so I haven't got any complaints. So I, I think that they're hopefully they're they're doing good. Um, I also met up with our own our very own Bob Schneck to try and locate the source of a mysterious noise that's been terrorizing the residents of Battery Park City. We did a bit of uh, old fashioned gumshoeing around to try to rule out a number of uh, different structures in the area um, that you know where the noise could be coming from. We talked to people. They had also heard the noise, and you know they tried to find it even in their own you know area. So we were able to kind of you know uh, use the uh, uh, rule out uh, uh, different places. But until we find that noise, um, we'll we'll keep our antennas up and try to figure out what that is that's bedeviling the residents of Battery Park City. Um, if you live in Fidei and you hear a strange noise coming from around the West Street area at night, let me know. Um, we we definitely want to try to pinpoint that and and uh, and correct the condition. And with that, Tammy, I, I give it back to you. Thank you. Let's move ahead. Perfect. My chair report. Next slide. It's been a busy month, but we want to start out with some fantastic positive news. If you missed it today, the mayor announced a capital project to protect the seaport from frequent flooding. Pledge 110 million dollars for Lower Manhattan. So for us, for our Seaport Historic District, this is really fantastic news. Um, we are really looking forward to understanding the details of it. So since last month, we did a DOT catch up, um, which was a leadership call that talked about infill stations for City Bike. We'll be continuing, um, and now that the pandemic is over, it should probably kick up a little stronger. Um, we looked at safety around PSIS 276. They have struggled because they no longer have a crossing guard and they're looking for traffic mitigation changes as well. We talked about the Brooklyn Bridge. We talked about Five World Trade Center Streetscape and LMCR. As far as um, Andrew and I were both at the HRP Advisory Council and Alice and Diana at the Governor's Island Trust Advisory Council this month. I attended the rally with assembly member Glick about open restaurants and that dovetailed perfectly into our resolution. We welcomed a new community planning fellow. So James Wilson, let's see if James is here. Yeah, hi. Thank hi. you very much for having me. So we ask you to take off your, there you go, welcome. And you get, we'll give you, put you on the spot to say hello, welcome and uh, elevator pitch. 
Oh, wonderful. Hi, everyone. It's nice to meet all of you. I'm currently getting my master's degree um, in urban planning, and I'll be doing a demographics uh, update based on the current census. Um, in regards to that, if anyone has any interest in demographics for the community board, please do feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email is jw6468 at nyu.edu right now. So if you will have any questions about methodology or um, anything about demographics, if you'd like to be, uh, you know, see any of it, please do feel free to reach out or have any concerns. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. We look forward to the work and don't worry, asking ye shall receive. You will get lots of stuff from us, so no problems. Um, next, we want to welcome, we have a new board member who was appointed, Bernard Lynn, and I think he signed on. Today is his literal first day with us, so everybody be kind. We're, we're tiptoeing him through the process. Right, yeah, do you mind? Yeah, thank you, Tim. I just got your your email. So I the information I got actually says that uh, the board meeting was October 23rd and then didn't mention didn't have information about today's meeting or link. So yeah. Sorry about that. That's Welcome sorry. along. Um very nice to have you here. Um if you want to give us our two minute speech or 20 seconds, whatever makes you uh, yeah, so my name is Bernard Lind, and so my professional career is that I'm in uh, uh, technology, so mostly internet and, you know, also with the blockchain, big data, um, as well as, uh, you know, uh, cloud technology. And that's kind of my my professional background. And I've been in a law in Manhattan for since 2000, right after September 11. So I've been here for a long time. So I'm so glad that to be able to uh, uh, make some contribution or, uh, you know, to address, to help out any issues uh, in this community. Perfect. Well, welcome aboard. We will get you a mentor. We will get you oriented and you will be up to speed by a week. Thank you. No worries. Welcome aboard. All righty. Busy month as it is. Um, we had the Hudson River Park Advisory Council this month. Um, we had a CAC meeting for Five World Trade, and there was an EIS scoping hearing for the Battery Park City um, resiliency, which goes from the Museum of Jewish Heritage, the demolition of Wagner Park through all of Battery Park. All righty. Um, and then we had a really interesting call that I wanted to put out publicly that with FDNY, NYPD, Port Authority, and ESD regarding World Trade Center campus security in Liberty Street. Um, Pat, Lucian, Diana, and I attended, um, and it was an interesting meeting. We learned some good information that there is a possibility that we could potentially get a left turn from southbound on West Street into Albany to help the traffic in the east and west passage of cars and deliveries and trucks. But we also learned that according to Port Authority, as well as Silverstein and everyone else, Five World Trade Center is not a part of the World Trade Center campus plan. It is not connected, it is not related, it is not at all. So how that works in the discussions uh, for that we have had that have been told to us about um, financing and about other things is still undetermined and unclear to us, but it was certainly an interesting um, meeting. Uh, borough board was last week and the bu budget process, I want to say thank you to everybody who's worked on it. One of the things that I find so interesting about the budget is you really do learn a lot about how the city works and what we have said in the past and what the city has told us. For example, we're going to be sending a letter from the chair because according to OMB in Airtable, there was funding for the Brooklyn Bridge Esplanade which is also an area that we understand was offered as a Howard Hughes public benefit, but it was, according to Airtable and Office of the OMB, um, it was paid, it was funded in 2021, and there are funds that have been set aside from 2021-2022, so combine that with our mayor announcing the $110 million for Lower Manhattan that goes from the Brooklyn Bridge down to Wall Street, we would really like to see some clarity. And I think only by working through the budget process for the last two months, as tedious as it may be, can we start to see the inconsistencies and really try and push the city to get us the clarity and transparency we're looking for. 
and then that brings me to 240 Greenwich Street, even though the public lost um, and didn't get their swing at the bat with city planning, we are still going to find and ask and get that foil. And I'll leave that there. Next slide. So what do we have coming up for next month? Um, everything will be virtual. Thank you very much. The office is there. New board member training, Gail covered, so I won't say anything. 250 water moves, as we know, more CACs. The important thing now that the mayor has said that they're willing to have a listening tour for what is important for open restaurants and that perhaps, you know, they won't do anything necessarily until they do this. It's time for us to take a look again at open restaurants. I put the timeline there again. This is really what we want to see. And it should not be just quote open restaurants. We have all said um, in this board and voted on a resolution that talked about public art and climate change solutions and other things. So it really is a time for us to put on paper a positive resolution for the things that we want to see and the processes we want to see. I think that's super important. Um, and then you'll see the things that are coming along. We are still, as everyone has heard, pushing for the Brooklyn Bridge banks. Um, we have some more work we can do in the advocacy with our potential incoming elected officials. We have far more things that we can do. And I have not heard from someone who has asked me recently, I've not heard one thing from the BBJ recently other than construction. You know, warnings, so no, there's been no CAC meetings. I am still waiting for information that was never sent from the mayor's office. So we are asking and continuing advocating, but here we are. Next slide. So while you're in lower Manhattan, please take a walk around. Have you noticed the beautiful art? So this is a program that is running through November 28th, which is a partnership between the Downtown Alliance and Art on the Avenue. I encourage you. Go grab a beverage of your choice, enjoy the art, walk around. If you find an artist you love, take a look at the art on the app link and you can have more information about them. And there's there's um, QR codes at almost every place so you can do that. Next slide. Happy Halloween. And if you're wondering, yes, those are pumpkins we have made in my house. Crazy as that might be. Have fun, be safe out there. Remember flu season's upon us. Look out for the latest vaccine stuff that came. Take good care of yourselves because we are only virtual so far for two more months. And with that, I close my chair report. Okay, we're going to do the budget uh, resolution now. Does anybody have any questions before we call a question? I know we just did the public hearing, but does anybody else have anything else to add? Yeah, um, since I'm new, if you don't mind, like, where is this budget coming from? Is this the city allocation to? Yes, it is. Oh. It is the budget for 2023. And we will walk you through all of it with Lucian to excruciating detail. <laughs> and you are fully welcome to abstain if you don't feel comfortable voting for things that you don't know. Ready? Okay. All yep. right. We're going to go through this super fast and then Justine is going to go and then we're moving on. All right. So not hearing anything, let's call roll call real quick. Lucian or Mimi or Colin, who's calling roll call tonight? I believe it's me. Can you all hear me? Yes. Let's Good. Rock. Good. Good. All right. Um, listen up, people. Amaruso. Yes. Blank. Blank, yes. Brown Kennedy. Brown Kennedy, okay. yes. Thank you. Uh, Cameron. Cameron, yes. Thank you. Uh, Cassell. Cassell, yes. Thank you. Colley. Oh, Sorry, I think I heard something. I just want to hear it again. Collie? Collie. Come back around at the end. Keep going. All right. Uh, Chang? Chang, that's yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Chapman? Chapman, yes. Thank you. Charcutian? Charcutian, yes. Thank you. Cole? Cole, yes. 
Thank you. Coleman? Coleman, yes. Thank you. Corman? Corman, yes. Thank you. Kucha? Kuchia, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Curtis? Curtis? Keep going. Uh, Airman? Bruce, you there? All righty. Flores? Flores, yes. Thank you. Forsberg? Forsberg, yes. Thank you. Francoeur? <clears throat> Francoeur, yes. Thank you. Friedman? Friedman? Moving on. Um, yes. Oh, thank you so much. Got it. Uh, Froman? Froman, yes. Thank you. Galloway? Galloway, yes. Thank you. Goldstein? Goldstein, yes. Grant? Grant, yes. Thank you. Gupta? Gupta, yes. Thank you. Mariama? Oh, James, sorry. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Uh, Joyce? Yes. Thank you. Kay? Kay, yes. Thank you. Canel? Canel, yes. Thank you. Kettering? Kettering, yes. Thank you. Copel? Copel, yes. Thank you. Lamir? Lamir, yes. Thank you for the, um, sorry about that. Uh, thank you. Um, Lerner? Lerner, yes. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Lewinson? Lewinson, yes. Thank you. Lynn? Yes. Thank you. Mahoney? Mahoney, yes. Thank you. McHugh? Hey. McHugh, yes. Thank you. Meltzer? Meltzer votes yes. Thank you. Thanks. My Hawk? Get back to you, My Hawk. Moore? Moore, yes. Thank you. Schneck? Schneck, yes. Thank you. Star? Star, yes. Thank you. Sung? Which song? Jimmy Song, yes. Oh, yes. Sorry. Um, Jimmy Song. There are two of you. Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Vera Song? <laughs> yes. Song, yes. Thank you. Townley? Townley, yes. Thank you. Weinstock? Excused. All right. Z? The only Z, yes. Excellent. You? You, yes. Thank you. Zelter? Zelter, yes. Thank you. Can go back up to the top here. Um, Colleen? I don't see her. All right. And Curtis? Uh, Francis is not here tonight. I don't see her. Okay. And um, Airman? He's here. Okay. Uh, Bruce, you must unmute yourself and vote orally for attendance. You can't text or chat. So let's see. I saw Bruce earlier as a panelist. He's disappeared. Can we check and see where he is? I'm going to check the CD. Yep. Send off. Attendee. Okay. Mm. I'm not seeing him. Uh, did he go? Yeah, I'll I'll keep watching the attendee section to see if he signs back on. Okay, great. All oh, right. We also, uh, my hawk is my hawk missing? 
that my hawk is absent. Okay. All right. So I think we're good shape. That's great. Um, the only two things I'm going to give my reports literally going to be like three minutes. Um, we are, we had a long discussion at executive committee based on what happened at five world trade center. We will take it up in committee again to try and change the notification for modernization for New York state, because it's unreal that we rely on snail mail in the age of technology as the primary means for notification for state to local. And with that, let's go to battery park city. Thanks so much, Tanley, and thanks for taking me out of turn. Um, all right, I'll be quick. This is just reports. Um, I want to give you first update is um, our first topic was New York Waterway and the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. They attended our meeting to discuss the recent noise complaints that are stemming from the boats at the Brookfield Ferry Terminal. Um, I was really pleased that that um, Deputy Director Beth Ann Rooney of the Port Department showed up at our meeting, um, and she really took responsibility and uh, some action, I think, uh, to try to help the situation. Um, she committed to adding a neighbor requirement in a new RFP where it would only be using tier three boats or better. They're gonna work on getting the obnoxious uh, horns on the boats down. And basically just to work with us and talk with us and even was willing to form um, a working group to help uh, give color to the RFP. So, so we'd be able to enhance their the compliance of the new operator, which she is kind of assumes is going to be New York Waterway again, um, but we don't know and um, enhance their compliance and responsiveness. And of course, Donald Leota was on the from New York Waterways was on the call as well. And he did report stuff and he gave us some updates about the different boats and how they're being repowered and there's different changes to it. So while um, nothing was really uh, set in stone, we did not go to a resolution for it. It seemed as if we were making some progress. So fingers crossed that maybe um, this may put some meat to the bones of cutting the noise down at that ferry terminal. Um, the next thing we did was um, I'm kind of jumping a little bit, but next, which is what I think I did in the meeting. I jumped around um, the Solaire co-op co building. The attorney general has approved the offering plan. So we are looking at one more new co-op building in Battery Park City. And it's sad to say we're losing a rental building, which uh, at this point is containing affordable housing. We still don't have the details as to whether or not that affordable housing will be preserved. And if it is for how long, we will get updated and looking for more information. Um, the next thing we talked about was the uh, what's noted as the uh, Battery Park City building check-in. Um, that was an update from the Homeowners Coalition and the Homeowners Co Coalition Negotiating Committee about the ground rents, as well as the Battery Alliance. Um, all right, so I guess the short, sweet answer is the Homeless Coalition is focused on affordability in Battery Park City, which is a switch from what the prog what the focus has been in the past six years or so. The new negotiating committee has met with the Battery Park City three times since it's in since they were elected. We've made progress, although there was uh, what we what the what the negotiating committee characterized as a setback was having to have a meeting with. Um, that included HRNA, where they presented their uh, proposals and their ideas, um, which we said a resounding no to, which I believe was kind of what our predecessors had said as well. Uh, it was a very cordial meeting, of course, and BJ was there too, as well as Nick, and we appreciate them opening the doors to us and keeping it going. Um, we also, um, the negotiating committee from the Homeowners Coalition also did put forth their proposal, which was focused on affordability, and there's more to come on that. Um, as we get details, we'll let you know. Um, another thing we discussed was a presentation of sorts, a brief presentation by Pat Murphy from Allied Universal. There had been up, up running up to the October meeting, there had been some discussions in the neighborhoods about questions about what Allied did, what they don't do, what their procedures are. Uh, Pat gave us a, an update as to what was going on with, with Allied. Um, there were some discussions about dogs and, and dogs off the leashes. 
but it was a rather um, muted conversation. I expected more fireworks than there were. Um, what else? The BPCA report, as usual, Nick does did his job of letting us know what's going on in Battery Park City. And um, we did have a discussion about inclusion and the Joint Purpose Fund gold setting. Um, we asked, it was, it's a report. We've asked the authority and powers that be and putting on the record that we need representation from the community on the, on the whatever it is, a committee, a board, whatever it is, to be deciding the next um, iteration of what the book, the surplus that goes into the joint purpose fund is um, what the buckets are. So that again, more to come. We've got nothing resolved. And that kind of winds up the Battery Park City Committee. Thank you, and thank you for letting me go. Just in question. Yes. yes. Go ahead. Are any of the um, apartments in the co-op that's to come, that's replacing the affordable apartments in the rental, will, it, will any of the co-op apartments be affordable? I don't know. That is what we want to know. We we wanted to see this. Tammy, you yeah. may have more information. If you look at the offering plan, the answer is no. It's all market rate and up. Studio started eight hundred thousand dollars. So were they, no. were they looking to preserve the affordable rental housing and, and keeping it? That that's what I had understood, but I don't have the details. So it's unfortunately they're not guaranteed. As far as I was told, they're not guaranteed the units, which is what we would have wanted was units as affordable in perpetuity. Yes. Permit, um, but it is only until the person who is the current occupant. Uh, moves out and then it becomes all so within a short period of time, potentially, you know, it, it could be sold, all right. It turns into a co-op and, 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 and an owner to ship building versus a rental building. Yeah, that that is unfortunate. So once again, more affordable units being lost. Uh, correct. And and potentially a template for the rest of the rental buildings in Battery Park City. So yes. any kind of rental housing stock that we have that, that was promised to be retained. Correct. Um, oh, and I also see, a, we had in our agenda the reference to the memorial placement transparency. We discussed it, nothing was decided. And it's it's at this point, the authority has no information as to what gover the governor, the new governor is going to be doing or not doing. So um, that's also let you know what's going on when we know it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I don't you. see any hands up. Have a, a nice night and you are excused. Thank yeah, you, Tammy. Oh, Andrew has a hand up. Sorry. Andrew, sorry, I wasn't, sure. I wasn't sure if it went up successfully or not. Justine, sorry if I missed this, but is there a date for when the terrace reopens? Upper terrace? Upper terrace. By you the mean field? field? Oh, no, that's a good, I don't know. That's I will put that on my list. And Andrew Nick Spordon, I believe, is in the public session. I'd be really happy if he could answer that because it's yeah. Um, so would somebody unmute Nick and see if he can answer that? He may not. I don't. Nick. Nick, are you there? He might not be at his yes. computer. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna call him. He's there. Uh, He's there. Yeah. Here he is. Hi there. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, we can. Oh, Nick. Sorry, I'm just uh, in the rain. But I'm, also, oh, so, I'm under some sidewalk. sidewalk oh, it is sharp. It is raining. Which come in handy when you're in the rain. Uh, hey, yeah. Andrew. Um, I should have, uh, I don't have a precise date, but I would say uh, in the coming weeks or so. Justine, I have the BPC committee meeting next Wednesday night, and I yes. will have a more fulsome update at that time. But it is, uh, it's nearing completion, and we're excited about it. Okay, cool. And and Andrew, I'm going to put that as a note of things to make sure we talk about at the meeting. So, great. You know, if any, anything else? Yep. No, thank you. Thanks, Nick. Anybody else? I'm sorry, I'm not looking at the hands. Tammy, you're on mute. Mariama, I'm assuming your hand is done. So, if you click back to your reactions button again, you can lower your hand. Um, so I think with that, that's it. Thank you, Nick, very much. And thank you, Justine. Thank you, guys. Here we go. Bye. Let's hit the next one. Landmarks. Jason, you're up. Hi. Um, so I think we should take, uh, uh, 
I'm just looking at this. The stock exchange. Do we want to? I'm going to just recap everybody on that, and then maybe we'll take that alone. Um, so uh, we saw the State Street Advisors, uh, an applicant for um, the extension of the landmarks permit for the Fearless Girl statue in front of the New York Stock Exchange on Broad Street on the cobblestones there. That whole street bed area is um, like a landmark district, and it is the street bed, in fact, that's part of the contributing, uh, what contributes to the district, not necessarily the beautiful buildings on the, uh, that surround it, which many are, are individual landmarks. So um, the recommendation uh, that I had written as a resolution uh, was to resolve that um, due to the uncertainty surrounding the way the statue was originally approved by landmarks and whose jurisdiction it is to approve such a thing, um, I wrote a resolution that uh, asked the Landmarks Commission to reject any extensions until uh, everybody is sure that the process is properly fo followed by which someone puts a public work of art um, on the streets of New York. And it was unclear to us if that process was filed. My experience is that uh, those type of things have to go to the Public Desi Design Commission. Um, this only went to the Landmarks uh, Commission uh, maybe three years ago after being moved from its original spot, which was not, you know, illegally, it was, it was not legally placed there. Um, so that was our recommendation, uh, which is to reject uh, until and, and then see this item at landmarks if that's part of the process after the other part of the process has been uh, followed. So that's that one. If we want to move on to the next one was uh, read. I saw I saw hands go up. Oh, questions. OK, sure. I apologize um, because we'll go in order for where I saw the hands. Mariana, again, I'm going to assume that your hand is by accident, and so I'm going to go Jeff, and then Jeff Galloway, Jess Coleman, and Eric Flores in that order. Jeff, you're first. Sure. My my comment is that the the resolution reads as if it if we as if we do not like the fearless girl statue, um, and just speaking for myself and my family, I actually like that statue, and I and I think it's in fact. Um, uh, as sort of implied by <laughs> the resolution, very well received by visitors um, and perhaps by residents as well. But as one resident, I certainly like it. Um, and so, if the, I mean, the resolution as it stands sounds like we're basically saying we don't like this thing. How in the world did this ever get here? Because it didn't go through the right process. So let's get rid of it uh, until it goes through the right process, which is, is kind of a, a, a negative. Implication, which uh, I, I wouldn't support since because I actually like the statue and I think it's positive. Um, if the, if the complaint is not so much that we don't like the statute, but we don't like the process. Uh, we could tweak the language a little bit, but it's not. I'm not 1 that likes to avoid going through. Processes that are designed to deal with. Situations on the street, such as a public design uh, review process, but on the other hand, sometimes some of the most effective art in an urban area is kind of guerrilla art, uh, and this resolution kind of comes off as fuddy duddy uh, that some guerrilla art uh, resulted in here. Let's get rid of it until it goes through uh, the blue blood uh, process. So, um, I don't think I would. Res support the resolution as stated and i guess my question is is it is it the sense of the landmarks commission that the statute should go and is it the sense of the landmarks commission that we should be discouraging guerrilla art yeah i don't think we really are going to take any position on guerrilla art and and we're not here to take any position on actually the art itself um you know there's a process and statues don't just appear in the roadbeds of 
like ancient, as far as our civilization is concerned, uh, areas, Wall Street is, you know, if everybody just took a statue and, and plop, cemented it into the ground on, on Wall and Broad Street, I just don't think that that is fair. And I, and I actually, I hope the, the intention of the resolution is, is not to pass judgment on how good the statue is. And I think that, um, that whereas where we talk about how it is a well-visited site, you know, if we could add something about how it's well visited by residents as well, and then, um, you know, we could delete anything uh, that seems like it uh, is passing a judgment on the design of the statue. The point of it really is that people have to follow the process so that we don't have people cementing statues into the ground where they think it's fit and how they think it looks good. Um, and, you know, frankly, the statue won't be removed from its footings, uh, and I'm not asking, I don't think anyone's really asking for that. That's, a, that's kind of like an illogical way to proceed on this. Uh, however, I, I just don't see how we can support uh, any application that doesn't follow the, the course of action that, that all statues or all, anything that's designed to be put into the public uh, space should follow. Um, well, so I'm open to changes, like said, but let's hear let's hear how some other people from the committee may have interpreted it. Or you know, I'm not here to put my Sen flag in the ground on this. Well, just I have some suggested language yeah. that would al uh, alleviate yeah. that concern. If if our problem is process, uh, if you're making a friendly amendment, make the friendly amendment. If not, you can wait. I will come back to you. We have three other people with their hands up, so. I'll, I'll I'll wait if you'll come sure. back to me. I will come back to you. Come oh. back second call. So, Judge so Coleman, Eric Flores, Bruce, Susan, Mark, Mitch, and then back to Jeff. And let's try and be mindful, people. We want to get through. We have a long night. Hi, thank thanks, Tammy. Um, yeah, I mean, Jeff hit it completely on the, the nail on the head. It said exactly what I was going to say. Um, so I guess I, I just want to push you a little more and ask: Is, is there is there anything particularly about this process and this statue that is objectionable or is this just a general process complaint because like jeff I, i'm I, you know i'm not convinced that you know this indicates the breakdown of the process such that you know we're we're basically giving a green light to anyone who wants to cement something in the ground so i'm, I'm just wondering if there's anything particularly about uh this statue that uh is objectionable so jeff i think hold on vicky i'll get to you I can respond since I sit on that committee and bring some clarity. Okay. That would be great. Thank you. Now or later. Go now, Vicki, because that would, if it's the same question. No, we... it's a response. No, no. So... Yes, Vicki's going to answer. But what I'm saying is if anybody else after this asks the same question, this is not about the design and Vicki will explain the process in there. And I have to remind people. When we talked about open restaurants, we talked about additions of public art and public space. So I kind of get where they're going, but Vicki, go. Right. I just wanted to bring up the issue that during our committee meeting, uh, a very helpful uh, public me member gave us a brief history. You know, this is not exactly a public sculpture. This wasn't actually started as a public sculpture. This came as a corporate gesture, a corporate uh, office on Wall Street that is now moving out. They got sued for, um, you know, I, I can't remember, not sexual harassment, excuse me, um, not equal pay. So this isn't actually designed as a public uh, statue. It is not, it didn't start off as a comment uh, towards a public issue. It is a particular company that went ahead and did this and then installed it. And one might think it's a guerrilla act, but you know what? Public statues have to have a process. So this, this statue is now cemented into the ground. It, it starts to get dressed. There are all kinds of issues that come up. Public statues generally tend to have a plinth or something that raises it above the you know, common plane of the street. Uh, it might have some kind of an enclosure. This was not designed like that. And therefore the expression that you see now is a process 
product of a corporation that got in trouble and then generated this thing for what we were actually told was mostly a public gesture, a, a private gesture trying to wash themselves off. They're now leaving wall street area themselves we also heard that the artist is now in a lawsuit this is a very complicated thing while we think that uh you know this was designed in this uh, spirit it is not and therefore we decided that it's best to go back reverse the process and go through a, pu a public hearing and then if it's decided in the right way then we would welcome this um, gesture, and that's how, you know, Jason wrote this, the, the, that's the spirit of the resolution, because there's a long history to this. It's not as simple as just putting a statue. And then there was a discussion, you know, um, the statue, the high, the intention. There's some of us that think that a small child, you know, confronting uh, a, a world may not actually be what a lot of professional women want. So that's why a, uh, a commission needs to review this if it is going to be a public statue. And first and foremost, for New Yorkers and not for tourists. Uh, and that's that was the spirit of our discussion. Thank you, Vicky, very much. If Vicky has answered your initial question, please put your hand down. Bruce, Susan, Mark, Mitch, and Colin. Wait, wasn't I up? Yep. In my ridiculous uh, IT problem, can you hear me? I can't, Bruce. Wasn't I'm I next? Sorry. Someone else talking? Sammy, wasn't I next? Ah, I apologize, Eric. I missed you. Yes, okay. Eric was before Bruce. Bruce, you'll have to hang on. Thank you, Eric. No, no problem. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll try to be quick. I, I agree with Jeff that reading this reads that we don't like this statue. And listening to, uh, listening to Jason, it sounds like we don't want. It's a completely different uh, standard. We don't want to put these statues or whatever in here. But that's not how this reads. So part you're, you're talking about process isn't part of the process that you apply for extensions in order to keep it there. It depends. Well, if actually, the, the prop. No, so we're kind of backed into that scenario, which is what rubs personally me the wrong way. Um, we believe uh, that and through some research that that I did and, and Mr. Todd find did not research that we asked the applicant to do and they could have done that. And they didn't uh, that the whole process starts with the uh, public design commission. And so that that never happened for this statue in any of its positions. What happened was some, uh, you know, council for landmarks and council for this guy and that guy. Doesn't look like they looked at the charter. They determined that, well, we just need to get a permit from landmarks. And such permit, uh, I believe, wasn't didn't even require a public hearing. Uh, it, they came to us, I, I believe, to just tell us about it, not so much to uh, by requirement because it it, uh, it required a public hearing at the landmarks commission level. And so, where we find ourselves is standing with a, a permit that uh, didn't come out of the process that it should have. Um, and being asked to renew such a permit. And so for me, that just seems like the wrong way to process such a thing, even if everybody loved it, even if it spewed out dollar bills into everybody's face, it yeah. should just follow the procedure. Just like some guy has to come in and follow a procedure to put a handicap lift onto your, you know, uh, building. I I'm, I'm trying to give it like completely different you know, scenario, but you follow the rules and, and we ask our developers to do that and, 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 you know, have their architects come by and, 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 and spend a lot of money on presentation materials. That I think that this should be held to the same standard, even though the standard for the application is, is different than those things that I just listed. Um, and I'll just reiterate, I don't, I don't want, uh, I, I'm not looking for a resolution that says. We hate this statue. So if that's what's coming out of it, I'd, I'd prefer it to read more like we hate that the process wasn't followed. And we'll let it end it here, but we're not going to let you extend a unvalidated permit. Yes, I understand what you're saying. I think it'd be better off to use it as an example of saying we don't like this process. Here's what the process is. Here's what an alternate process was. 
this is an example of it because this does come out like this statute is hated by the group. Okay, so the problem is, the problem is we have to be we have to have our our ears and eyes to the process that it's now a part of, yeah, and that's that right. process where they're going to now take it to the landmarks commission, and if we write something in the inverse, like we wish that they would extend the permit, they're not they're, they're just not going to listen to us, and they're going to and they're going to just extend the permit and. And really, they shouldn't because it should be it should go through the process before anything is extended so that other people can weigh in. It's not for me to decide, but when you go to a public review process, it, it's the opportunity for other people in the community to say, I love it. I hate it. Not show Jason, up, whatever. Jason, I'm going to pause here to mention you're at 9 minutes on 1 resolution. I'm okay. sorry to be uh, for Jason and Vicki. I'm sorry to be kind of the taskmaster. I don't we can move on. I mean, if they don't like it, they don't have to vote. I mean, it's okay. simple. So we have, if someone has already said something, please don't repeat it. I'm going Bruce, Susan, and everybody's going to get one minute, and I apologize, but let's be really concise and clear. Bruce, Susan, Mark, Mitch, oh my God, and I've got way more hands. I'm not, um, no, yeah. Seriously, if your point has been made, please lower your hands. Bruce. Okay, so I agree with uh, Jeff in principle. Uh, it's great to have Sculpture and much of the things like uh, uh, Basquiat was half of it was uh, Gorilla. Is there anything uh, new that you have however, to? However, yes, yes. However, this is the only, this is the only landmark designated street 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 grid that exists in all of New York City. It's the only street pattern that is itself landmark. That's almost a special consideration. And I agree with the committee that that should be untampered with. However, one could easily add, and I would make a friendly resolution, simply that the community board does not uh, does not is not opining on the merits of the sculpture per se. Okay, that, that is a friendly amendment. Amendment like that. You, Jason, you accept that? Yes, yeah. it doesn't have to be. You know, however, everyone, anyone wants to write it, Jeff. I accept. We should just say it has nothing to do with the design of it. Okay, right. accepted and moved on. Right. Thank you, right. Bruce. Susan, I agree. And I would uh, propose that we do it and move on from this. It has nothing. Thank to you. Okay. Uh, are you making a motion to call the question? Is that what yes. you're doing? Yes. I second it. Alice, oh. a second, which means we, we still have hands. Um, I thought you said you were coming we back to me. But... But I can I can rule on that motion, which I intend to right now. Coming back to Jeff, which I promised him, and then we are taking a vote. You I said if something has somebody something new to say or new to ask, that's why I we a few of us waited respectfully without interrupting. Well, you can't interrupt. Well, I know that, but I'm I'm just being polite. <laughs> well, let's just rush through it, okay? Let's just do it. I mean, let's just do it. What does anyone have to say? Go next. Was the bull done with the proper process, or wasn't that done also? Originally, it was not. Originally it was not. Okay, so the, I just wanted to point out the hypocrisy, and I would, if you want to talk about the process, then I would suggest take the name of the fearless girl statue off of this resolution or, or vote, and then just do it about the process. Otherwise, because it's an application in specifics to this. Okay, then I just wanted to point out the hypocrisy of uh, because the. No, Mitch, it set a bad precedent, and we're trying to stop it now. Okay, Respect. Cool. Wasn't born basically when that bull statue was there, so okay. it's not hypocrisy. It's Jason is the chair of the landmarks commission, and he's a hypocrite for, for saying for doing that. Oh boy! boy. If you guys don't like it, okay, don't vote yes. Stop. Okay. Everybody, stop. That's it. Stop. We're not talking about. And this is an application very specifically for this. We have a friendly amendment that's been added. If you have something new, I will call on you. If it is not, you will be muted, and okay. that's it. I'm not getting into a, there's no name calling here. Thank you. Sarah. I, I read the resolution and, and I didn't get this complexity to it. Would you put the wording up please? Yes. Thank you. Diana, put the wording up.
again, we are not talking about anything other than this application. Uh, Diana, you have um, one hand over square, shall we? Sarah, once that gets up, do you, uh, do you have another comment or you just need to see it? I just I, need I just, to see it again. That's fine, thank you. Uh, Diana, thank you. you still showing one hand over square, please? There we go, moving down. Okay, Gerald, your hand was up, Betty, and then back to Jeff and call the vote, that's it. Yeah, yeah, Tammy, my, my hand is up, uh, was up, and I just want to, I don't want to steal your thunder on this, but to, to remind everybody of something that you've said often that work is done in the committees. Um, we sat through testimony on this. Uh, I personally was very surprised to hear the testimony that, that was received, but, um, you know, this resolution did come out of some very interesting testimony, and I would just uh, like to uh, encourage everybody to uh, go back and listen to the community meeting. It's all online. Um, please do that. You'll hear the same testimony we heard and 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 maybe uh, your conclusions might be a little different. Thank you. Uh, and I thank Gerald for saying that. And if you see something that's coming up in the packet and you have this kind of passion for it, please listen to the recording before you come to the full board meeting. Betty. Uh, yes, I just wanted to bring up the bottom line to me really is this is a statue that I like. I see no reason for it to be removed to go through technicalities that haven't been held to everybody else to get rid of it so that we could potentially lose it to me would be a big loss. And, and that's really the bottom line. You are uh, certainly um, everyone seems to have their own perspective and vote as you will. Thanks. Jeff, back to you and then we are calling the question. Okay, okay, my I, I will read my suggested friendly amendment language, um, but as as I've heard the discussion, clearly the committee would not agree with this. Um, uh, but let me just read it because I promised to read it. Um, and this would replace the next to the last, uh, whereas the one that says the existing statute in placement was not subject to the public design commission approval process. Um, the suggested language. <clears throat> was going to be, although CB1 considers the statute to be a positive addition in the FIDI area, CB1 is concerned that the statute was placed without going through the Public Design Commission approval process that is required for the placement of public art in public space. Um, uh, but it appears that the committee actually does not like the statute, stop, stop, stop. Um, and so stop, we'll not about that. Stop. Don't put the personal opinion. That is your friendly amendment. That text. Let's have the chair and the co-chair answer I, that. I don't, don't have a problem that. with that, Jeff. And I, but I just feel like nothing's going to change my mind about. Let's add that. Yes, but I would, I would, I would feel like it didn't, didn't speak on the conclusions that were made in committee to change the therefore be it resolved to a recommendation for extension. Okay, so that's where I, we could add whatever we want, but I don't think recommending it for extension at landmarks is the right, uh, it okay. rightfully captures what we discussed. My friendly amendment was only as to the whereas, not to sure. the no, result. accept that. Okay, okay. Accept. so now with the friendly amendment accepted, thank you, Jason. Thank you, Vicki. Um, I highly encourage everybody, they run a fantastically detailed meeting. Can you please go to their meeting next time instead of negotiating this through here technically? All right, we're going to uh, call the question and move on. So we are not doing roll call on this. We've already done roll call. Second. Thank you. So we will Still say good. we're going to go all in favor. If you are abstaining, please you say your last name and your vote. So I'm calling for all abstentions. Brown Kennedy abstains. Zelter abstains. Turkudian abstains. Perfect. Thank you very much. Zach abstains. Abstains. Um, also, um, Eric, you abstains. Thank you, Eric. Amarusa votes present. <laughs> uh, Are you calling for no's, you Tommy? All right, I kind of missed a couple of those. One second. There are five abstentions. It was Bob Schneck. It was Darren Torkudian. 
um, Megan Brown Kennedy, Andrew Zelter, and I, uh, and I believe uh, Eric Yu. All right, one sec. Um, Tammy, point of order, I don't know if we have a function for voting present, do we? It's an abstention. Yeah, that's what I thought, thank you. So that All makes right. Camarusso an abstention as well. I'm voting present, not abstention. We don't, don't think that's an option. We have no, yes, abstain, or recuse. Those are the four options. What does Robert's rule say? You're allowed to, yes, oh, you vote present. present. You're allowed to vote present. Let's come back. Mark, I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to go look through our bylaws. Okay. Right. okay. Uh, do, you, do you mind if I mention, like, can I go through what I got so far? I'm sorry. I'm new at this. Um, and we haven't called no's yet, so you got to call no's and recusals. Right. Sure, sure. Yeah, but I'm I'm having trouble just catching up right now. So um, for abstentions, I have in alphabetical order, uh, Amoruso, Brown Kennedy, Charcuterie, Schneck, and Zeltzer. Is that correct? Did I miss anybody? No. You. I am not abstaining. I'm voting present. What does that mean, Mark? What do you want to say? <sighs> getting late and we don't know so help us out you stop it doesn't make a difference our bylaws specifically say that together with the number of members voting yes no abstaining and recusing those are the only four options we have mark if you choose to vote any of those that's great if you choose not to vote that will be your choice in the meeting okay moving on this is really just getting out of hand i don't know how much coffee everybody's had but let's just keep on the line Mimi, you good with the amount of abstentions that you have? So, um, Mimi, um, you forgot my name. You abstains. Okay, sure. Thank you. A abstains. Ketring abstains. Okay. Are there any more abstentions? Are there any recusals? Are there any no's? Roman, Roman. Roman votes no. Thank you. Thank you. Are, are there any other no's? Mahoney Townley no. votes no. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Townley votes no. Thank you. Mahoney votes no. Thank you. There was Flores no. Flores no. Thank you. Coleman no. Coleman no. Thank you. Chang votes no. Chang votes no. Thank you. Okay, Mimi. Got it. That's the vote. All others that are present are voted as a yes. Okay. okay. Jason, Thanks. next. Up, can, can someone put up that list? I think 78 Reed was next. Um, I, I, I can't quite see. Is it? Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, so 78 Reed, we asked for a lot of changes. I think this guy's coming back to us um, and we don't recommend approval. Uh, that's a storefront redo, um, actually on Church Street. Uh, it, the building is an L-shaped building. Um, so we don't like what they're proposing. Move to the next slide if it's in the next project. Uh, okay, one Hanover Square, which is the India House. Um, we felt like some of the changes they were proposing were not really were kind of destructive to the history of the of the building and so we didn't really care for what they were proposing to the uh that kind of second floor level there that walk up first floor um it's some door replacement it's some signage we didn't care for any of that so that was a, a not a recommending for approval uh for the most part for the stuff that you could see from the street um the next slide is stone street okay what, what what's that we didn't see it that's part of that's okay so this is part of the part of the india house still um and uh we didn't object to some of that work that's on stone street it was uh some work to the ground floor infill of that kind of third building that middle building you see in the middle of those six buildings um but overall, we, again, we didn't approve of, of the work done to the principal building there that, that faces Hanover Square. 
Uh, so let's move to the next uh, project. That's Franklin Street. So Franklin Street is um, a wonderful uh, early stone building uh, on Franklin Street. And the proposal here is for new ground floor infill uh, painted wood uh, and uh, a additional story with bulkhead, which has minimal visibility from a street called Franklin Place. Um, and then also from the West on Franklin Street. This proposal was previously approved from uh, through us and Landmarks, but the permit expired. So uh, they came back with a revised scope. Uh, we felt like in general, it was um, respectful of the building. We asked the um, applicant to do some additional uh, probing and uh, paint analysis so that we could uh, see that they would paint everything back the way it originally was. Uh, they said they were they had no problem with that, and uh, we we felt like this we could recommend approval of this scope, which is basically the storefront infill and the penthouse uh, for the commission to see. Uh, so we, we wrote a favorable resolution for that project. Okay, I think the last one is the American Stock Exchange, right? Okay, yep, let's keep going. That's Franklin. Okay, so. Is right. this going to be controversial that we should take this one? Separately? Okay, so let's just take the other ones and we can have a very brief controversy over this last one. I don't think it's controversial, but you're right, Tommy, something might pop up. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on the two that we have already discussed? Looking for hands up. I see two hands, Betty and Gerald. Betty, you're first and then followed by Gerald. Sorry, that was a mistake. I'll take it down. Thank you. Gerald, is your hand still up? Uh, it is, Tammy. I don't have a question. I have a uh, friendly amendment uh, to the resolution for one handover. Okay, Jason. Take it away. Uh, yeah, Jason, um, so I guess the amendment would go along the lines of whereas uh, the removal of a skylight on the roof provides additional opportunities to relocate mechanical equipment further from the edge of the structure or something along those lines um, and, and possibly uh, would do away with the uh, need for um, the mechanical louvers altogether, but uh, that's something that would need to be looked at. So, okay, Vicky wrote this one, so I'll, I'm just going to let her she respond. Did a great job. We nailed yeah. everything. What do you think, Vicky? Thank you, Jason. I wrote the India House. I didn't write this one. Oh, but wait. I know. Oh, no, wait, this wait, is wait. India House. Yeah, he's talking about India House. We haven't gone to the stock. Oh, oh, you went back to India House. No, 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 that was carefully considered. So the existing dunnage that is on the left, on the right side of the building, excuse me, um, just gets a small addition at the back, uh, Gerald, but you can't move it because it will then straddle the existing historical skylight. We already discussed that. I believe that the um, applicant had stated that they were looking into the structural possibility of that. But what, why would you want to move it from a no roof area to above a skylight? No, not to above a skylight, to uh, the area where they're removing a skylight. Right, that skylight is in line with the other skylight. So you would have to start on one end and it's got to anchor into the other side. So, uh, right, the, the, the dunnage has to be off the roof. Correct. My 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 understanding was that the applicant had stated they would um, they would be checking that out with their uh, mechanical uh, or excuse me with the structural engineer. Uh, right. Um, it's not even structural. Thank you, Jerry. But um, I would stay with what we have. It was very carefully constructed. So, Jason, if it's okay with you, um, you are not accepting the friendly amendment. No. Perfect. Okay. Moving on. Pat Moore. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Pat. 
Yeah. Sorry, I, I miss I, I was on the phone with my mom. Sorry. Is this <laughs> is this on Greenwich Street? Is this the Bacon America old American oh, stock exchange? Oh, not yet. We haven't there. gotten to that yet. We're gonna get okay. to that. Sorry. Hanover Square. Sorry. This is Hanover Square. Right. Okay. I don't see any hands up any any longer for Hanover Square and the other one. So let's call those together. You good with that, Jason? Vicky? I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Sorry. Okay. Point of order, Tenny. Which two? Uh, it's actually more than two. We That's have one hand over. Yeah. One hand over. We have seventy one seventy three Franklin. We have that seventy eight Reed. Yeah. So okay. items two, three, and four on the agenda. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. So, are there any no's? Hearing no no's, are there any abstentions? Hearing no abstentions, are there any recusals? Perfect. Motion passes. All right, Jason, take okay, us away. So, um, the next project is we we only looked at it in the light of landmarks, not anything about uh, gatherings or liquor licenses, and that is for the um, reuse of the American Stock Exchange building, which has a deco facade there on Trinity Place, and then has a separate facade um, on Greenwich Street. Uh, and they're both kind of front facing facades. And, and, and so the work here, the, the work here that's going on that uh, really is above staff level, um, and at the staff level, I want to say that what's been proposed by the applicant is a very thorough um, cleaning and keeping of, of pretty much all of these windows that we see here. Um, and then uh, some ground level infill replacements with, um, I would say, high end materials like metal and uh, glass in a style that I think was acceptable. Um, and then on uh, the, the roof of the building, which is the, the lower building of the two, there is a proposal to uh, in, make an enlargement, a one story addition that's very set back from uh, Greenwich Street and has some minimal visibility uh, from the west and maybe also from the, the north uh, west. However, uh, it's it, and this is a good way to see it on this image. You see the existing and proposed. The proposal is to remove all that gray, um, antiquated mechanical work and pump rooms and stuff like that. That's all gone, and to replace it with, albeit in its footprint, a larger uh, volume. Um, but that volume would be some sort of occupiable interior space that would bleed out onto the roof of the building. Um, it doesn't seem from the way that they presented it in their uh, view corridor studies and renderings of the proposal that it um, diminishes the, you know, importance of the, the building facade that the, it, we see from the ground on Greenwich Street. So um, we thought that it was a, an appropriate roof addition uh, based on the scale of what was being proposed and the height of what's being proposed relative to that of the existing building. Um, so we uh, agreed that we could uh, support this uh, roof addition and the ground floor infill, and we asked them to not put um, the marquees that they were proposing uh, onto either facade. Okay, I'm sure we have hands up. I have questions. I'll wait to the end. Bruce and then Pat. Bruce. Bruce Aaron. Backing before I saw can, some. Can you hear back. me? There I can, Bruce. Okay, unfortunately, the rendering that I see is so small, I, I can't make out the details. I'm taking this opportunity because I don't know what other opportunity there will be simply to say that after 21 years as chair or co chair of this committee, I am stunned that people are personally attacking the new uh, 
committee, the new chairs and co-chairs, and I, I think it's totally inappropriate, and I think they're doing a great job. That's all I want to say. We love that. Thank you, Bruce. Pat, and then Gerald. Who's the entity that's asking to do this? Apparently a new owner and they employed uh, Higgins Quays Bar for their um, restoration package. And, and I, I don't know who the new owner is and I'm not even sure, you know, I couldn't validate the who, who owns it by title or anything. Um, my guess is that the, the people that presented this don't actually fully own the property. I don't know why they would close before getting any sort of approvals but you know well, you remember they had some okay. kind of a previous engagement and then the day after our committee met the new owner took over the deed remember something like that well that's what they that's what they said exactly but i'm not no one checked the deed they, and i'm not tracing right, right. well i just wanted to know and and so lucian if you're there can we look into this because before they start to do any kind of construction we need to have a conversation with them Oh, whether Pat, we do this proposal huge, or not. Pat, it's a huge venue, huge. I live right next to it, I know. Okay, and, and I'm glad you brought this up. And uh, another committee member here, Gerald, walks by here every day, and they've actually begun demolition even before coming to us. Right, Gerald? That is correct. That is That's correct. Right. Well, we need That's to have been... this um, before quality yeah. of life. All right, thank you. Thank All right, so, uh, Pat, thank you. We're going to Gerald. And then I have questions after Gerald. Uh, if I just had one one um, correction here in the uh, in the resolution, uh, Jason, which was the word canopy is in the one two three fourth fourth whereas needs to be changed to marquee because a marquee by uh, New York City Department of Buildings Code specifically is about roof structures being attached and supported by the building and that also project into the public right of way. Uh, Got which it. was another issue. Yeah, it's really the public right away uh, is a big key here the, with those those um, lower uh, roof marquees. I agree. So I just want to clarify, I'm going to go to Alice next, and but I want to clarify what Gerald just said. So it would change that um, also the therefore be it resolved that you approve the proposal without any marquees to be located on Trinity and Greenwich, correct? Correct. It's not only in the whereas, it's also in the final, therefore be it resolved. Understood. Okay, Alice. I just wanted to take this opportunity um, just to note something. You know, we are often, this isn't necessarily a landmarking issue so quickly. It's simply just to be aware that when we allow for a public building to have an additional story put on. That's a pretty big thing to have allowed. And we should be vigilant and scrupulous as to the question Pat asked as to if we really want to have this in terms of what will be, who will be owning it and running it. Though that I know is not a landmark question, it's something to consider. And specifically, I think of the Battery Maritime Terminal Building, that exquisite Beaux Arts piece at the South Street, which is now a private club on that additional story, which is no beauty. So I just want to point that out as we move forward together as a board to always consider what this extra story will be for our community. Thanks. Thank you, Alice. Alice, did you have any changes that you were making? Is, is there a friendly amendment in there or just a comment? I'm sorry. Simple comment, <laughs> taking advantage of the moment. I feel strongly about that private uh, privatization of public spaces. Jeff Galloway, you're next. In terms of who owns it, and uh, as I think I agree with Alice, it not necessarily affects the um, uh, landmarks issue, but yesterday's cranes, which I do not subscribe to, but I get their newsletter, so I see the headlines, read NFL, NHL owner Buckle makes $155 million FIDI purchase, billionaire takes control of the American Stock Exchange building. Oh, really? Take, take that for whatever you think it's worth. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Oh, Thanks, Jeff. I think it was something like that. It's a huge venue coming in uh, right across the street from World Trade Center 5. I mean, congestion, like, like, like we can't. Oh, sorry to interrupt. That's why I wanted to know if it was still, you know, the huge music venue. 
the owner. I asked them and they said there wouldn't be any live music, but that wasn't in our purview, but just to get a feeling for what they were doing, uh, it is an enormous uh, addition to an already congested area. Exactly. Thank you. Great. Maybe they're turning it into a fight club. All right. <laughs> All right. I see no other hands because Alice is already gone and Bruce is already gone. Um, and seeing no new hands that have come up. Um, I have one question. Jason, did they talk about um, the additional floor that they're looking to add? Was Did they detail why that was required? Oh, I don't think it was a requirement. I think it's, um, you know, the site's probably very underbuilt. And uh, I felt like, you know, it seemed like anybody else would, would do that uh, if they were going to do that other restoration work. And and then for that reason, I for the modesty of it, honestly, I thought that, that uh, you know, we felt like it was appropriate size. Uh, and not too much of like a land grab uh, to put on top of the building. So would it be appropriate then to add to comment that something of this size and only this size and nothing more? Because I don't know if they decided to change it and make it a story and a half if it would come back. I agree. I, I agree I'm to... fine with that. I, I hope that's not the way things are currently running at the commission, but you know, yeah, let's put that into Make sure we have a backstop for that. Thank you very much. That is my friendly amendment in whatever verbal acumen you and Vicki choose it. Andrew, I'll throw your hands up. Andrew? Andrew's hand is. Yeah. No oh, there Sorry, Tammy. I just want to clarify for the purposes of this conversation. This resolution and our vote is specific are specific to the landmark issues, not quality of life issues. Correct. Okay, thank you. But that's why, if because it is landmark and because it often would potentially go back to maybe just office review, and not come back to us, I wanted the limitation on the height. Yeah. All right. Um, so, if seeing no other questions, Jason, you ready to call the question? Vicky. Uh, yes, second. Perfect. Uh, Mimi, you ready? So, again, like all others, if you are in favor, you don't need to vote. We are calling for, are there any no's? Hearing no no's, are there any abstentions? I'm, I'm, no. Uh, Pat, are you abstaining or no? I'm abstaining. Meltzer abstains. More abstains. Are there any other abstentions? Okay, any recusals? Fantastic. Motion passes. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Vicki. All right, let's move to the next committee peeps. Quality of life. Oh, I just realized. Sorry, that's me. <laughs> yeah. So every other month we have DDC come in to tell us about all of the uh all of the infrastructure projects that are going on in the community, Worth Street. Uh, Vestry Street, Water Street, uh, Greenwich Street. So, if you're really interested in the details, please look at our uh, YouTube meeting and you can hear all the details of those streets and what the projects entail and what the, the anticipated deadlines will be. Um, other than that, our committee had a discussion about equity and inclusion. That's going to be an ongoing discussion. The conversation is about as we look at all of our quality of life issues that we deal with, how we are going to make sure that they are fair and equitable to all people, all people who live in our community. Um, we also had a brief discussion about World Trade Number Five and the fact that we would like to have a larger space uh, for the community center. We will go back to that. We know that it is something that um, land use has to discuss, but we'd like to talk uh, quality of life. We'd like to have that discussion along with land use, and uh, we are looking to write a reso. So we will have that discussion next month. That's it. Awesome. Thank you, Pat. That was nice and fast. Next committee. 
and thank you, Pat, for keeping me under five minutes for just reports. So far, we're two for two I, tonight. I, Tammy, I have a question, Pat. I have a question. Could you just can you just tell us if you've heard from um, about the street probe work done at the uh, Borough Base Jail? When was the last time? Um, they are going to come you? back, and yeah, they they did not have that discuss come to us this month. Hopefully, they'll come next month, and we will have that discussion. Thanks. All, all recent probes are being done by Con Ed. Those are all utility probes at this point. Awesome. Anybody else? Okay. Large venues, Mariama, take us home. We completed a discussion on items that we wanted to put into a resolution involving security, lighting, uh, garbage, and things of that nature that we later voted on in licensing. So you'll see it again in a few moments when we get to Susan. That's it. Awesome. Susan, you're next. Okay, dokie. Um, so let's do the large venue um, uh, that we proposed and you can see in the whereas is what we consider uh, um, 75 indoors or 200 persons or more may gather outdoors. We spent a lot of time on this. And um, we felt we should be on record and begin to do this because of all the things that are happening and uh, 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 the taking over of these large spaces. <clears throat> so um, I don't have any more to say about it. Um, we spent a, a number of meetings with Miriama uh, setting this up. This has been a year in the making. So, um, I would like to take this separate from the licensing things I have. So, a cool question. Need a second. So, oh, second. Oh, my hands up for a question. Oh, sorry. I see two hands up. Joe, you go first. So, uh, where where are we going to send our answer to this resolution? Who gets it? What city agency or what? Well, uh, it's a, the, one of the pieces is around licensing, Joe, and for the SLA, um, I would love to send it also to the DOT. Uh, I don't know whether, I mean, since I we have to, I think we have to, um, uh, I don't know. I haven't thought of anybody else. Um, maybe Miriama has, but we would send it to the office of nightlife. We would send the it nightlife. I forgot about that. Well, I wanted to clear it up. Thank you. That's my pleasure. Okay, next hand is Andrew Zelter. Bless your hands up from before, Andrew. Oop, hand gone. Okay, we're in great shape. So let's uh, call the question. Okay, call the question. I second. Okay, Mimi, you want to take this one? Sure. Any um, abstentions? Any recusals? Any opposed? Mahoney votes no. Anybody else? Hearing none, vote vote called. Thank you very much. All right. So, so we have a lot on the agenda. I'd like to do two things. Um, uh, most everything is uh, uh, not too controversial here, except 100 Pearl Street and um, uh, what's the other one? And 24 John. I'd like to keep those separate. Um, uh, and all the others we didn't have any trouble with, unless there is somebody from the audience uh, uh, or somewhere who would like to ask a question or talk about it. But the uh, Pearl Street and um, 24 John are very specific and I would like to keep those separate. So if we want to vote on all the others, except those two, we could do that. So Susan, I just want to be really clear for Tribeca, we're taking six Murray, 96 Lafayette, 279 church, 293 church. Um, I'm sorry, the last one was just a report in the last two. So we're taking six Murray, 96 Lafayette, 24 John, 52 Broadway, 125 Fulton together? Yes. 
And there's right. a couple of I'm others. Not, not John, right? I'm not John, not 24 John. No, 24 John will be separate. And 24 John and 100 Pearl, I thought was separate, right? Yes, both yeah. of them. Yes. Yeah, those two and five, I, number one and two will be taken separately. Everything else is together. Thank you. You're welcome. Mimi, you did a rocking job putting you back on the spot. Go for it. Just want to make sure I'm clear. We are taking vote right now for everything but 24 John and 100 Pearl. Correct. Correct. All right. Um, any abstentions? Any recusals? Any opposed? Sweet. Thanks. All right, let's do 24 John before we do 100 Pearl. Uh, 24 John, uh, if you have read it, uh, uh, we did not approve it. They have come to us before and they have been um, uh, uh, wanting to open a, a they wanted an on-premise liquor license um, and really to have uh, traffic off the street and the neighbors. The hotel has been nothing but a problem. Uh, it has, uh, uh, it, ha it has, uh, the, the public interest is, um, uh, is not considered in this. There's traffic, there are police and having liquor will only cause more trouble for the neighborhood. They don't pay attention, they don't do anything. And the, the, the um, uh, resolution is really self-explanatory and the community was, really came out and they want to, uh, we wanna go to the 500 foot hearing and they also wanna go in front of the SLA. And with accompanying this resolution, we'll also, we're going to write a letter really describing uh, that this is not in the public interest of this community. We say it in the resolution, but I'd like to be a little more forceful. So um, if somebody has any questions about this. Well, I just raised my hand to add that um, for those who were at the quality of life meetings that we had on this, this is the, uh, the hotel where we had to have Captain Smith come in because there were a couple of shootings and, and different things going on over there. So that, that that contributed heavily to the, the decline. And if those of you who know me know I do not like not to approve a liquor license. I feel you know we have some obligation with our stipulations, but this is unconscionable, and that's why we did this. Okay, Patrick Canal, you're next. I, I just want to thank the committee. It's a really thoughtful resolution, um, and you can tell how much uh, care and deliberation the committee gave to the community members. And the residents who live around there, it is a big problem. You guys nailed it, and I thought it was a great resolution. So I'll be fully supporting it. I want to put a hear here to Jen. She's my co-person on this, and Lucian. They, they, they've been, they were really helpful, all of us. And Miriam, we just were, we feel very strongly about this. So can we? We have a question call in a second. Uh, so if you just called the question, I'm going to second it because I don't okay. see any other. All right, so let's call the question. This is. 24 John. Mimi, take it away. Any abstentions? Any recusals? Any opposed? Alrighty. Next. Motion passes. Thank you so much. Unanimously. Let's move on to 100 Thank Pearl. You. This is 100 Pearl. So this is the Guardian building, for those of you who don't know, that is on uh, water and Pearl. It fronts on water, it backs on Pearl, it is off of Hanover Square. It was um, a hallmark, it was a number of things, and they uh, took all of that public space and now are making it a food hall. And uh, uh, they claimed that there was nobody living in the neighborhood, a variety of things. And so we have, um, we wrote this resolution and I have a number of comments from my committee, uh, 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 friendly amendments, um, uh, they're going to be, so I'm going to read you the amendments I would like to add and then we can move on. Whereas there will be 16 vendors in the 
food hall, the only vendor selling and serving liquor is the one applying for the liquor license in the bar portion of the food hall. The rest will be able to sell beer and wine. Whereas the residential buildings across neighboring, uh, across and neighboring the establishment, including Hanover Square, uh, 10 and 3 Hanover Square, have uh, 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 hundreds of people living in them. And whereas it, we, uh, we would like to have uh, uh, <coughs> no egress on Pearl Street, and there are eight bars directly across the street on Pearl. And um, uh, we would like monitors, Joe would like, and I think it's correct, monitors for the noise vibration during, uh, uh, <coughs> it, it is constructed. Um, I don't think there's going to be any more construction there. Um, and we propose changing the hours of uh, uh, service from 8 a.m. not to 7 a.m. Uh, the applicant hasn't responded to us. We asked them for all of these, and that's why I want uh, uh, a lot of this put in the amendment. We're very concerned about their liquor. We gave them till 10 p.m. We didn't give them later. The the park, uh, everybody spills out into Pearl Street. They don't go out to Water Street. And it, for the community, it's been horrific. <coughs> so it does not, um, um, we were very concerned about this. So I would take any questions or any other friendly amendments if there are any. It's a real terrible thing that's happening to our community. Just let me tell you that. Okay, Susan, we have two hands up. We have Alice and then Mariama. If Mariama, uh, if your hand was up from before, then take it down, please. Well, if Mariama has a question, either one, uh, Alice, go on. What? Do you, what? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I just wanted to. It, it, is it worth our while to? It, this is the interior arcade pops, right? So, is it is it worth our while to have some sort of amendment that's saying that the consent or whatever the agreement should abide by CB one's recommendation concerning the interior pops? I don't remember what we um, came up with there, but as I recall, we were very clear in not wanting lots. We wanted more space, less restaurant stalls, and so I don't know if this is germane here, but I would I think it, that it's not germane here. Uh, I don't have any trouble putting something in, and we well, could. Well, it's not, germane, it's not it related to this. Alice. Okay, so so this is not the place where there's several restaurants moving oh, across. There are all these food stalls. It right. is the place. So, You're absolutely. So I think right. it is the place. So I think you should have that in there because the work that was done in land use on that interior arcade indicated, and Vicky, I know you were part of that conversation, to have less food stalls and so and to have more space to circulate in. So I, I you have a number of food stalls you're agreeing to here. Which, I think it's sixteen, and it, yeah. when we looked at if you looked at the. Uh, uh, it looked at like it was spacious, but I am very, uh, if you will give me some verbiage, I will be delighted to put it in. Okay, well, I just recommend it doesn't contradict okay. what we said land use. Yeah, yeah okay. we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Thanks. Thank you, Alice. Uh, that's a friendly amendment that has been accepted. Colin? Yuriyama. Just really quick question, so I understand it. I remember having this conversation, Alice. Just to be clear, this is a pop space, right? This is a, a legally public space, is it not? Correct. If I, you know, I'm having a hard time as I can't unfortunately pull up this for whatever reason. This particular resolution well, it's not. Up. I mean, it's a pop space that's been converted for Christ's yeah. sake. So I don't know whether it's a pop space anymore. No, it, it, no, it was part of that Water Street resolution where they're now allowed to reclaim public pops. Unfortunately, that's what it is, Colin. They reclaim this. This is no pops. This has no place. Yeah. It is. It's an interior pops. It's an interior infill of the arcade. It is part of the Water Street Text Amendment. If okay, I'm well, we should then put it in. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I've been, I've been just, mistaken, Colin. Yeah. I just asked because I, I don't know, and I apologize for, for taking well, time, Tammy, but I want to be very clear on this. I intend to vote no on this because we have to hold a line on pop spaces if the city continues to keep letting them go, right? <laughs> But this was already voted by this uh, board some years ago. Just I remember I was there. Oh, okay. Then so, uh, 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 I just want to say, Colin, voting no, you know, defeating this allows them a lot of latitude and license. All right, fair so, point. 
okay? So that's that's always my point here. You got to think when you vote no on this one, it gives them, uh, 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 if it's defeated, then they have free license, free, you know, but I think Alice's point of putting in what they were and what they're obligated, what their obligations under that is valid. It's a begrudgingly good point, and I'm frustrated by this because it, we seem to keep losing these points, but uh, yeah, you're all right. I can't disagree. All right, fine. Can I call the question? May I? Uh, Mother, may I? I have two hands that have been answered, oh. so please call the question. I second it. Mimi, take us away. Don't we love our new assistant secretary? Yes. Yeah. Okay, people. Um, yeah, yes, I'm frightened. <laughs> any abstentions? Kettering abstains. Anybody else? Any recusals? Any oppositions, opposes? Oh, you know. Thank you. It passes. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you, Thank you very much. Long work. I appreciate it. I'm giving everybody a time check. It's 8.53. We've got a couple of committees left to go. Paul Goldstein, you, you've got two reports. Yes, thank you. Okay, let's start with Hudson River Park and let's go to the slides. Uh, we did have a report from Noreen Doyle. She's the new president and chief executive officer of Hudson River Park. She took over in June. She's been affiliated. She was ex executive vice president from 2004 until now. And before then, she also played roles at the park. So she's well, she knows the park well. She's been involved in many, many projects. She did show us some of the things that are going on outside the area. I'm not going to belabor them. Here's Gansford Peninsula, uh, spring 23, as you could see, a big ball field, a beach, a docking area to the north. The community is very excited. Next, Kelsey, also fortunate in getting uh, an athletic field and uh, a dog run, among other things, for their community, basketball, et cetera. And finally, let's keep going. Pier 97. This is up by the Javits Center, and this is another proposal that's supposed to open in the near future, spring 23. So all these communities are very fortunate, and um, these parks will obviously be serving lots of people. Okay, as for down here, we spent a lot of time talking about a project called the Estuarium. Estuarium has been kicking around Community Board 1 for many, many years. It's a project this board has long supported. It was proposed by a group called the River Project, which is still around. And um, it's never gotten very far. It's never been able to raise the money that was needed, and there's no difference now. They need to raise money, but they are nonetheless going to issue an RFP for this project that they hope will hope will uh, bring about some additional fundraising for this project. So the RFP is supposed to be done by the end of the year, and. Um, just for those who don't know, an estuarium is designed to showcase the living species in the river, including education programs, aquariums, et cetera. And it's going to be located just uh, just right at Pier 26, if it's ever built. And just one other point on Hudson River Park is uh, the River Project and Richard Corman, who's now in charge of that organization, uh, asked me to tell everyone that they are sponsoring an event tomorrow called Release of the Fishes from 3 to 6 p.m. over at Pier 40, the wet lab, and that's where they do release their fish and invertebrae that they've captured and shown off and return them back to the water. Okay, my next topic is Brooklyn Bridge Banks. Um, on October 10th, as Tammy reported, we did have a phone call with a few members of the board participating with Borough Commissioner Ed Pincar. 
and we did talk about the banks. This was in follow-up to several events uh, back in November, this uh, November 2020, the board passed a resolution asking for the Brooklyn banks and other areas to be returned to the community. And then back in April, we did a walk around with the commissioner and very little has transpired since then. And uh, I would say that Mr. Binkar was not too forthcoming regarding what they were thinking about in terms of restoration of the banks uh, to the community space it was. He said that he would come back relatively soon with some sort of public space recommendations. I have to say, I've never gotten the impression that he is at all eager to return the space to the community and we didn't get clear answers as to why the banks needed to remain closed if construction was taking place in other portions of the bridge miles away over the upcoming years. More to come, as Tammy said, we're getting new elected officials, many of whom will hopefully be more supportive and we will report back at that time. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. Let's move along. That brings us to transportation and Betty Kay. And after Betty, just so everybody knows, we have three committees. We have environmental, batter, um, oh, two, and youth and ed and street fairs. Go ahead, Betty. Yeah, thank you. Yes, we're gonna have three resolutions, but if you go to the next slide, I'm gonna use these to guide me. Yes, I wanna go through the updates first. Uh, the stop sign request at Peck Slip and Front Street, for those who are, live in the area are concerned, was put on hold by the DOT uh, while the parks developed Peck Slip. What they asked us was if anybody, well, actually more than one person, thinks the stop sign is still needed to please get back to them about that. Otherwise, they have dismissed that this time. Also, the Lower Manhattan Pedestrian Priority Pilot is being reactivated, which is very good news. Next. First resolution we do tonight is about Titus School, and I'm glad Patrick has already spoken about it. As you can see, these people are standing in front of the school to help the children get out. And as it stands now, the school buses can't get curb access. Yes, for location, just you can see where the dot is. Uh, and so we're going to be talking about going from, sorry, my eyes are killing me, uh, William Street over to Pearl Street, just so you get a sense of area. And next, and there are three children's centers there. So just to remind you, therefore be it resolved, we are asking uh, the DOT to make John Street a shared street with a five mile per hour speed limit. As Patrick said, nothing would be closed. We want to prioritize pedestrians moving because there are two infant centers across and preschools across the street from this school for special needs children, which is growing in size in student population. Next. We're asking them to consider it in the context of the, the there is a master plan for adding pedestrian space, which is partly what's being reactivated again uh, that I just mentioned before with the update. Implementing a pedestrian friendly shared street as soon as possible, because we know with capital funds, these things can be held up. We don't want that. They could use some low cost changes to allow it to occur when it's approved. And finally, next. Asking the, the Department of the NYPD to look at it because honking the horns is a big problem. We can get some occasional quieting. That would, might be helpful. And next, I think that's the end of it. Oh, and as Patrick brought up, we do have a lot of support for this, which is really the first time I've seen one of these in, in a committee that I've led. Kind of nice for change, huh, Betty? Yeah, well, it's very nice that all these people work together to get it done. Oh, next one, because there's there is one change. It's kind of interesting. There has been the DOT actually to show you how agreeable they were to this all. 
Uh, they have already sent notification and they've changing the street sign from being commercial parking 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. It is going to be re-signed to a no standing anytime, which hopefully will bl open up the street and give us some curb access in front of the school. But but that won't prevent the bus from stopping there, correct? Correct. You can drop off and pick up people at no standing anytime. You've got one hand up from Bruce Airman, and if I see no other hand, uh, no, yeah, one hand from Bruce. If there are no other hands, then I'll call the question right after Bruce. Hi. Uh, regarding uh, the parking and loading zones, uh, um, first of all, I just have to give kudos who, to whomever wrote this. It's uh, incredibly detailed and you know well done and annotated. I have to disagree with some part of it. I'm just going to put it out there very quickly. Uh, so far, at a time at the beginning of the pandemic when there was almost no traffic on the street, zero vision, which you call out, tangentially, along with other things, has resulted in an enormous increase in pedestrian injuries and deaths. The streets have become so, many streets, and this is a common complaint, have become so disorganized with additional uh, bollards and signages and street painting that, that is extremely confusing that I, I, I think it's actually been a problem. I, I don't think it's a good idea to expand it. I think we have to go back to the drawing board about how to save lives and passageways and so on. And I do think some, some, something should be mentioned in this since it's comprehensive about the enormous increase in unlicensed motorized vehicles, bis motorized bicycles, motorized scooters, motorized three-wheelers, just exploding in the street, on the street. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. All right, see, oh, goodness gracious. Mariama, Vicki, Mark, in that order. Um. Betty, when you when you say it's now going to be no standing any time, is that all day or is it still until six like we discussed? I was not told the answer to that. But generally, no standing any time does not have hours attached to it. I, I've never seen a no standing any time with hours attached to it. Unless it's a school zone. Uh, um, Be Betty, I think this one goes from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Oh, no, That's what I'm hoping for. They have a lot of that. Um, like the uh, uptown, you know, the Upper East Side, by their schools. Once school is over after four o'clock, then people can can park and behave normally in the neighborhood, which I think is fair. Yes. Now the DOT gave the hours that Natalie Brandefine, who is the head at the school, asked for, and will give three more hours than exists now. Betty, do you think uh, to satisfy where Mariama's going, that she belongs in the rezo? Because we're supporting it anyway, but we might as well put what we're supporting in detail. Well, doesn't the letter from DOT say that already? It does, because it says, you know, right now it's commercial 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. It's all placards that are there anyway. But yeah. this was going to be asking for from 7 a.m. To, to 4 p.m. But, but that's what the letter says. It says no standing Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. But Jeff, we're not submitting a letter. We're doing a resolution. Right, but the resolution happens. This letter was responding to exactly what we brought up in committee. Right. Now, my, yeah, my point is it looks like they've agreed to that. They have. All right, then moving on. Bruce, Vicki, Mark. Um, Bruce, I think, has already gone. He went first. I apologize. So now it's Vicki and then Mark. I just want to say, Betty, thanks for working so hard on this. Um, I live in this building and I wanted to point out to the whole committee that um, before this landlord, the, the, the famous landlord at 100 or 90 John rented this school on this incredibly tight street, right? Um, should have probably consulted the community about the impact the school would have. Um, he's also at the same time, for example, uh, closed off the rear entrance. And so all deliveries, move in, move out, everything in our building, which is 
the entrance is adjacent to the school actually can only take place on John Street. And next time, you know, I wonder if we can work on this that when a school comes in or any kind of public impact of this um, size should come before the community board or any you know city agency rather than a private person renting it and then creating such a, a problem that we now have to go through great lengths to resolve it. Thank you, Ricky. Mark. So uh, what Bruce Bruce said, um, uh, I've been saying as well. So alert the media, Bruce and I are in agreement on this one, and we should be taking this up. Okay. I think no other hands are up, then <clears throat> let's call the question. Sorry, Sorry. we take them together or? Uh, Betty, are you taking these together? This and the Lafayette bike lanes, or uh, this and the loading zones, any of the others? Or are you taking them individually? Uh -oh. I prefer to take, well. I'm not sensing a lot of opposition here. Yeah, me either. I, mean, I, I don't think there will be to any of them, but you never know. But any way you want to do it, I don't care. Together. Uh Together, we like togetherness. Okay, present the other two and then we'll call the question. I mean, if Bruce and Mark can do it, we can do it right now. Next Woo! slide. Well, yeah, next slide. Next slide. Diana, slide. Diana's been having it, it takes just one second. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Diana. Yeah, Center Street, Lafayette Street bike lanes. If you go to the next one, just to remind people of where we're talking about. So you can see it affects CB3 as well as, as us, but we're only dealing with what's within our district. So up to Canal Street. Uh, anyway, these lanes are going in, so that's not really what we're voting on. Uh, these, just to remind people, most of the things that are asked for are to make them operational and safe for the cyclists, as well as there are pedestrian improvements for them. Go to the next, I think this is all I have for this one. Oh, and just to remind you just how bad this problem is. Oh, sorry, this is the next resolution. Are there any questions about the bike lanes on Center and Lafayette? Um, I, I have a question. Um, sure. it's, it's really a comment. I, I've mentioned this before in the committee. I, I, I think this is a very, I, I don't agree with this because to turn Center Street between Worth Street and Canal Street into a one way, I, I think is is not prudent. Um, that's in front of three courthouses. Um, if there's any roadway instruction obstructions, it, it it'll just lead to to a log jam. Um, I I know you said said that um, the DOT is going to to put it in, but I mean, isn't that the point of us to to bring up these comments? Or I I I just like some clarification on that. There, the DOT's comment and what all the traffic engineers say is it's induced demand. Right now, there really only is one lane because of the double parking. So what they're going to do is putting in things to get rid of the double parking to a single parking, leaving still a single lane that's moving. The more lanes they build, the more cars choose to go that way. So it's, that's why it, they are moving forward with this. And this is part of the mandate for getting connections from the Brooklyn Bridge to, to areas north of it. It's just that if there's any any obstructions northbound anywhere, um, then there's going to be, you know, the only other northbound street is, is um, was it Mulberry and then John Street. So, and, and you have traffic coming off from, from Brooklyn Bridge. So I, I think that any obstruction and this will just create chaos. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. It is a conversation that's had often um, back and forth. So we will see how that rolls. Um, next, Betty. Yeah, the third one is is very much like one we did before. And this is just changing the parking zone rules. And the problem being that the freight unloading zones are always filled with placards in our area. Because it is legal for somebody with a placard to be able to, to park in an unloading zone, a freight zone. So, so asking them. 
we're going to ask them to change the rule to say that you can't park. <laughs> Here's the details. You can't park uh, with a placard in a loading zone. Okay. And two, that's not a, we have to flip it on both sides. Sorry. Take it off the list of where you can park, put it in where you can't park, and then change the, the second uh, rule that says that loading zones, commercial truck, and neighborhood locations cannot be obstructed with city owned vehicles. So I would like you to know that both uh, the Lafayette Street and this resolution was highly, highly appreciated in terms of topics on um, borough board. So this is something that um, we could potentially take borough wide. I see hands up on this one as well. Pat Moore. Sorry, was it just city owned vehicles or is it, you know, private vehicles driven by employees of those agencies? Well, then they have a placard. Okay. It should say city owned or placard. Okay. Right, so the first two of them are going after the rules that have to do with placards. The third one has to do with the city owned vehicle. So they don't need a placard. Exactly. Vicki, you're next. Sorry, I've been trying to take my hand down. It's got a cross now. It doesn't let you go down. It just crosses your hand. I apologize. I cross. Okay. okay. Mariama, you're next. Okay. okay. Is there any way, I mean, with the placards, trying to report them, you have to report them to 311, and then 311 tells the police that you reported them, and the police call you. So, like, for example, I, I showed you pictures of that car, that, that Camaro that's always in my neighborhood. It's, it's everywhere. It doesn't belong. It's so weird. There's a NYPD, like, sticker on the side like government plates from Arkansas on the car, tags only in the back, because they don't, I guess in Arkansas, they don't require a tag in the front. And then like a department of buildings or something, it looks like a paper um, placard that's been like, um, uh, you know, when you put plastic over it, I can't think of the word right now. Uh, when you cover something in plastic to make it into a card, that's what it looks like in his windshield. Laminated. Laminated, Laminated, yes. Laminated. It looks like he got something from every agency, you know, to be <laughs> to be able to park uh, wherever. Um, but then, if you call the police, like I said, when I call three one one, they they tell the police that I report. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and the police Doesn't call. Happen. Like, what are we? How are we supposed to go after these? Mariama, I think that's something that we take up separately in a separate resolution. Okay. About enforcement, and I do think that we could put some good public realm management skills and conversation to that okay. because goodness knows we definitely need some kind of we have city state and federal down here so and new jersey and task forces we have everything in lower manhattan so we have all kinds of placards which reminds me um that city or state issued placards um betty because we have you know city state federal it, it just needs to cover everybody yeah and another thing that i've been caught encountered that maybe we want to include on that is um like um the whole a hotel I, I had tried to drop my sister off she has ms so she was in a wheelchair and they had entire area in front of the hotel was blocked by these cars with these placards that looked illegal so I, re I reported them as well and the police called me and told me that they had given those placards to hotel employees to you know for convenience so like it's like everybody's using them these days that's lovely okay colin you're next if anything <laughs> i'd just like to call the question oh wait, I said, can i just clarify one thing with vic uh tammy are you saying that in this last one change it from city owned to government owned yes so people yep. consider that this one change on this particular resolution. Correct. That just covers us that we don't have to deal with, well, this is state or federal. Or New Jersey or Arkansas is the case with it. Yes, yeah, so is there a second on the motion to call a question? Second. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Mimi, take it away. All right, so we are covering Titus School bike lanes and the parking situation we've just been talking about. 
Uh, do we yes. have any abstentions? Any recusals? I'm sorry, because of what I had said earlier, Airman abstains on uh, on the, what is it, the parking and loading zone uh, resolution. And also, I got an email from Lucian that um, Tammy wants me to verbally say that, because I couldn't get on, that Airman votes yes to the First Amendment, which is the budget amendment. Thank you. Okay. So, to be clear, Bruce, you are abstaining to the one we've been talking about regarding placards placards uh it's is that is that the one just a second uh, the one that i spoke to uh, uh no, no he it's spoke the one to john street john i'm street. sorry i'm titus. sorry yes john street yes john street. Street. okay so the titus school john street one all right thank you so much anybody right. else any opposition opposed yeah, Marissa is a no for John Street and and the bike lanes. Anybody else? Uh, you is no uh, against the bike lanes only. Anybody else? All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Betty. Um, and for everybody on the board, we're going to take the ones about the parking in the um, loading zones, and we're going to try and get all the other Manhattan community boards to sign on so we can make this a borough board issue. So we'll be sending that out to all the boards asking for support next week. All right, Alice, you're next. Okay, um, we have yeah. quite a we had uh, we had quite a few reports, which I'll go through very quickly. Diana's going to help me. Um, so we finally got together at least two thirds of the group for the Green Streets program. Um, New York City Green Streets is a part of the Green Infrastructure Program, and it's to change unused road areas into green spaces. It's administered by the partnership of the Department of Parks and Recreation. The Department of Transportation and the Department of Environmental Protection, which makes them very complicated to achieve. Uh, DOT has ownership of roadways, DPR maintains the areas and requires investments often from friends groups, like we see uh, at Fenton Square, for example. Um, so DEP is responsible for the sort of environmental stormwater management. And they were unable to come to the community board. And surprisingly, though, they stated in an email to Diane and I that there are no plans to install green infrastructure in the uh, in the borough of Manhattan at this point in time, as their focus is on combined sewer outlet work in the boroughs, which is prioritized primarily in areas of acute need where the city incurs fines. So we're going to work very hard to change that. Um, I'm not sure what this slide is. But is there another one that I think we have one of the of the 50? Yeah. So um, this is a, a map that shows the 15 sites we currently have as green streets um, in our community, just in our CD. And um, site six, for example, which you can't possibly see, is the Barnett Newman Triangle, which we've attempted to complete since 2011. And DOT is more actively engaging with us on that. Um, so we're we're hopeful that we can have a little bit more of a dialogue with the three agencies and getting some more uh, traction on these. Okay, next. Uh, are there any questions on the Green Streets program? That's a, a picture of um, a Harlem Green Street, which is kind of a good one showing uh, a very seemingly simple solution in Harlem, which is to convert an open asphalt area with just simply permeable materials and vegetation which was funded by a council member, some of the council member support in this case. So it can be done and it should be done. So we really need to advocate for it. Uh, next slide. And here's an example of some of the stormwater green spaces that form part of the DEP's program, which are bioswales and the like, which we'll hopefully see more of. Next. Okay, so that's it on green streets. Um, the second report we got was terrific. It was by Caitlin Parkins from the Audubon Society, rather sobering statistics concerning birds and bird deaths, collisions 
in lower Manhattan, you see here the very powerful slide of the gravity of the situation, particularly, of course, the World Trade Center campus. Of, um, next slide. So the main threats to migrating birds, as probably many of you know, is light and glass. Next slide. So these I thought were interesting, the collision myths that they were called. Um, it's not simply a skyscraper issue. Um, they do occur at lower than 200 feet of buildings. Birds that fly away after colliding will survive. Um, many die later, however, and collisions happening at night. In fact, they happen mostly during the day when birds are resting and refueling. So that was kind of interesting. They offered up uh, some collision prevention. Next slide. So clearly the two areas would be to fix glass and reduce the lining. And it seemed there's there are relatively simple solutions, which most building owners could absolutely be involved in. And there are thankfully new laws that are out there to enforce this. Um, next slide. So right, local law 15, which is considered the bird friendly building law. And there are three other pieces of legislation pending, which are to prohibit nighttime illumination at certain times, um, which are, are sort of standing by since 2018. And we have promised that we will write a resolution at our next environmental protection meeting uh, in support of the work that the Audubon Bond Society is doing to protect the birds in uh, Lower Manhattan. Next slide. So um, the, the just I'm just going to give three announcements, and then I'm going to let Diana talk about the other items on the agenda to, to deal with 250 Water Street. But the the South Battery Park City Resiliency just those plans are going through um, the environmental impact statement stage, and our comments are due this Friday. And this is simply to comment on what you believe should be included in the public scope that isn't already. This stuff is all available on our website and on the Battery Park City Authority website. Um, so you really just want to look through that and see if you see things that you feel should be included that aren't. The other announcement I want to make is that on October 28th and November 4th, there'll be something called a walk shop by the Battery Park City Authority, which is kind of interesting, wonderful opportunity to understand what's going on in the west and north part of the park for their resiliency plans. So that'll come around to, I think, all of us with an invitation. And then, of course, the good news about the timely announcement of the, on the ninth anniversary of Superstorm Standy, the, of the $110 million in funding, which we'll be looking at very carefully. And lastly, the Lower Manhattan Coastal Resiliency has, is having two virtual open houses on Wednesday and Thursday, the 17th and 18th of November, where we can see what's going on with um, the plans for the resiliency plans for Friday Seaport. And uh, Diana is now going to uh, give a quick overview, I think, of 250 Water Street and um, Five World Trade Center. Thank you, Five World Trade Center. Sure. Five, the Five World Trade Center, we had gotten a floodplain notice for, for the project being cited in a 100 and 500 year floodplain. So we submitted a letter of comment, which is on the website, and also for the 250 Water Street Brownfield Cleanup Program for the public comment period on the remedial action work plan. That comment period closed on September 30th. The agencies did not uh, further extend a comment period in, until October 15th, as was requested by, by us and seemingly everybody else. But we submitted comment uh, jointly with Laura Dodge, who's the independent community monitor, uh, I know the agencies received over 400 comments as part of the remedial action work plan. So they're in the process of reviewing those and we are working with Laura on, on trying to gauge the timing of next steps. And I will also note we heard from Jason that there's quite a quality of life issue surrounding the site and, and on the sidewalks and, and uh, I guess they're, they're disgusting. They're poorly maintained. So um, I don't know if that branches over into quality of life, but but we'll keep tabs on it as it relates to the Brownfield cleanup program. And it, if it's an indication of, you know, how the projects are connected, that's something we, we will want to stay on top of. Thanks, Diane. I think that's it from us. Does anyone need, uh, I have a question. I think Mariam is your hand up from something previously. Yep, it's previous. Okay, so I don't see any other hands. So take it away next committee. Thank you. Uh, Justine is already gone, so we're rolling along. So, Tricia, you can add. 
and uh, Street Fair Task Force is the last one tonight, and that is a resolution. Tricia? He's here. Tricia, you on? Sorry, guys. Yes, I could not get this to uh, go. Apologies. Um, I Don't worry. <laughs> I was hitting it and nothing was happening. Okay. Um, so we, um, I'll do the resolution last. I'll start by saying um, that uh, we had um, uh, a short conversation about high school admissions results. I doubled back with all of our middle school um, guidance counselors and unfortunately only one kid out of all of our kids that were sent to other schools and put on wait lists at one of the 12 schools they had chosen only one of them cleared and it was to quest for learn quest to learn the rest of them there was no movement in the list whatsoever a handful of kids ended up going to richard green and all of the other kids either went to private school left the city one of them is homeschooling um, it was pretty tragic for our community district what happened so i'm in touch with the cec I suspect we're going to have a resolution in November on this, but I needed to do some more homework as to what happened to the community districts around us. But suffice it to say, the new admissions method that they put in place after the deadlines for you know, the schools with other options and with no fail safes um, in place was not a success. Um, so that was the first thing we reported on. We also um, heard from, um, my gosh, I'm just completely blanking. No, um, uh, from CB2, we had a guest from CB2 that brought us a resolution for, and I'm just, Mar, I'm so sorry, Mar Fitzpatrick um, from CB2 came down because she is a parent at LMC she brought a resolution to us um, advocating for the closure of New Street. New Street, as some of you might know, has those pop-up security things in the middle of the street. It backs up to the stock exchange. And so it's not a street that has through traffic. However, the, the street is used when there's construction, um and you know other things going on um that you know it's an emergency situation unfortunately there's been a lot of construction um and this happened actually kelly mcguire called me about this when he was there when there is construction they were doing demo back then these trucks are crushing things as all of the children are coming up to the building to go into the building on the new street entrance. It's a huge problem. She's advocating that the street be closed during uh, you know, arrival, lunch, and after school hours. So what we did was we took all of the points and then we are now doing diligence with um, the DOT and, you know, outreach in terms of everything that happens on that street, getting more information about the construction project so that we can revisit this at our November meeting and see if we indeed want to do a resolution in support of closing that uh, street at those hours. It also has uh, to be done in conjunction with transport. Exactly. So I will be reaching out to, I have two things for Betty, actually. The other thing I have for Betty um, has to do with another item um, regarding the PS150, aka Trinity Place School um, bus stop. 
um, we hadn't heard anything more from the Department of Transportation or the DOE about where they plan to let these children off at the new school. We assumed it would be um, Greenwich and Edgar um, because it's, you know, a very, it's, it's a quieter location. They're going to be extending, as we know, that sidewalk on the south side of the school. Um, but it turns out that they want to put the bus stop at Edgar and Trinity. So we're not really sure how they're going to do that. Um, the DOT has committed to closing the westbound lane of Edgar Street and keeping the eastbound lane open. We have not heard from them in a while though. And so I would like to uh, meet, you know, have the DOE come to the transportation meeting to discuss this item and the bus stop item and also invite the Department of Education to that meeting as soon as it can be scheduled because um, they haven't even let the principal into this building and I sense we might have the same issues we had at PS 276 where things, things are going to be decided before the educators get a chance to look at it and weigh in on it. So we'd like for that meeting to happen as soon as possible. Um, I will liaise with Betty about that and maybe need your support, Tammy, in getting them there. Um, so that was that. And then uh, we had a Church Street School. As you all know, Lisa stepped down after decades of, of incredible service. And um, Judy Levine came, who's the head of the board of directors and uh, introduced us to the new director at uh, Church Street. So that was, it was really nice to, to meet with him. And, uh, you know, we yeah. committed to getting to, you know, working with them as we always do. Um, and they promised to, you know, keep us in the loop as to new things that they're doing um, at Church Street. So that was great. And then Judith brought us a resolution. Trisha, um, before you start, Trisha. Uh -huh. Yeah. I have my hand raised since the first item. I guess maybe it didn't, wasn't. Uh, I'm, I'm actually, yeah, no, I'm not looking at that. Okay, so, so can sorry. I just say something before you uh -huh. get to the resolution about the first item? Yeah, sure. Yeah. The children graduate from middle school. That's what they do. And uh -huh. Trisha. Did a lot of great research on this brought to my attention something I did not know Trisha you'll and I just want to emphasize it and make and add some clarity to the to it so many children from our community graduate from middle school yes they do a significant number of them a third choose one to 12 choices where to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Bob Townley can count. A third of them did not get any of these twelve choices. Correct. So that is that is uh I won't. So Trisha brought this to our attention. She does a lot of great work on this. I no, from only anecdotal evidence from parents saying, Bob, what can you do? As many of them are in my middle school programs. Patricia brought it up. It is a, an abomination that children cannot go to high schools of their choice. And you'll see me vote no on the resolution. It's because I believe the DOE at the heart of them, at the heart of the DOE, is their incompetence in organizational and digital skills and we can get into that some other time but i just wanted to a thank you for that insight i wanted to bring it more to the attention i don't know if any of the electeds are still on the call but it is not nice for a parent in our community to get their kid their children not into any of the high schools close to where they want to be. So, Tricia, thank you. And I look forward to the resolution on it. And I hope when we do the resolution on it, it could be something where, you know, we could educate the future city council on it. Well, I mean, if you look at the resolution we did on this, Bob, we outlined yeah. a process that was functional and sane. Years ago. In terms yeah. of, well, in terms of if they want to, like, there's a, the reason they changed it is that there's an initiative to make it more fair 
and also more diverse. We have a problem with diversity in the Manhattan high schools, but the way they went about it right. was, was it completely so, counterintuitive. Right. So I don't and, want to conflate. I got but, it, Trish. I don't right. want to conflate the goal of the programs, which are laudable, and the program implementation. I don't even mention the goals of the program, original goals of the pro program, because that throws you off track. It's just that people can't get their kids into the schools they want. They could still get diversity and get parents to the schools that they want. Bob, we talked about it. It was one of the months, unfortunately, that you missed in the spring when we knew all of this. We're happy yeah. to certainly catch you. I didn't miss it. I didn't miss it. Send you the resolution. No, no, no. All right. So that'll I'm be November. About the implementation we can, of it, we can talk. Yeah. We can talk more about it in November. Um, but I do encourage you to come, Bob, to the meeting because it's going to be, you know, a great discussion. Um, in terms of our recommendations going okay. forward, um, I think also again my point tonight was not my point tonight was to enlighten the other fifty members of the community board on it. I think Bob, they know because our no, I don't think so. Three times higher than anywhere else in the city. I'm not so sure, Tammy. I would hope they would know because we've talked about it many times across yeah. the city. Yeah. They okay, and it's no, it's worth repeating, Tammy. I'm just telling you that the point here is to dramatize this to the community. And I don't think that the elected officials took it up enough. That's what I'm saying to you. Can we get on with the agenda, please? Yes. Yeah. We are yeah. going to, we are going to bring, get them more involved, Bob. Yes, um, thank you, Tricia. Okay, Trisha, um, you moving on, we have our last item, which is a resolution Judith brought to us um, that was based on a discussion that we had when we evaluated the failures of um, remote learning going into this school year. Um, we, you know, had concerns that if there was a critical juncture of kids sent home um, because of COVID cases, you know, especially since they've removed their remote learning option, they didn't seem, the city didn't seem to have a plan um, if they sent kids home that tested positive or were exposed, we could not get an answer that satisfied us. And it turns out it's because they have no plan. Um, and so the kids that have gotten sent home thus far have been just given copious amounts of, you know, written instruction on what to do at home. Again, this is what failed with the remote learning last year. And it's especially hard for our kids with any sort of learning disability to learn that way. They're basically teaching themselves. We, we connected with schools in other cities and what we found is that there had been great success with live recorded synchronous classes. Um, obviously it's not advisable for a child to be on them all day long, but at the same time, what we found last year in the way that the DOE delivered um, education to our kids that not only weren't there enough periods, they actually cut back on the amount of classes they offered, but they also had very little synchronous learning. Like one of my daughter had zero, um, which is not what we thought would be happening when they talked about blended learning at the beginning of COVID. So this resolution outlines the importance of synchronous learning. We talk about live recorded classes, which is happening in other places across the country where there's a camera on the teacher teaching. Um, and this resolution advocates for a more robust re uh, remote option where children who are at home can see their teacher deliver the lessons. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? I see Pat has a hand up. Bob still has a hand up. I don't know if he wants it up or down. No, no. I'm done. My, Thank you. My hand was about uh, Edgar Street. Uh, well, Pat, come when we do Edgar Street again. So it, there's no point to having that dialogue in this point because uh, DOT. We, it, it there's no point to going over it now. It has. It's we need to have the updates to know what we're talking about first. I just wanted to hear what's what. There was east to west. There was a discussion about what Edgar Street 
being closed. You know where I'm where I'm well, yeah. this, I this this much I can say, Pat, is that the um the building is going to have to extend the south sidewalk. Right now it's approximately seven feet. They're going to have to extend it by 10 feet because of the building mechanicals. And so they're definitely going to have to go 10 feet, which would eliminate that westbound lane as that lane is constructed right now. So right now you have a large median in the middle of this tiny street, right? You've got a two-way street, two street and then you have a large median in the middle of it. If you were to get rid of the median and it became um, evident or important that we needed two lanes of traffic there, it, it can be done. Um, originally, as you know, our committee advocated to close that westbound lane, pave over it, and keep the eastbound lane op open for emergency vehicles. There okay. is going to be a discussion at this meeting that we're going to have transportation where people can bring their concerns about having only one-way traffic there. Okay. The extension of this plaza does not preclude two-way traffic. It will just not have a large middle median anymore. Okay, that's fine. So keep it as two-way traffic. That's fine. And I'll well, come. I mean, it's it's not really what they're at. They're advocating for one. The, the DOE DOT referred to it. Pat. Yes, I Sammy. I don't want to go through this here. This yeah. is we'll do it at transportation. Work. Correct. This is well. I mean, no, no, no. This okay. is committee work. It's eight. Not, I don't want to leave the impression that they said two way traffic. That would be incorrect to do that. They okay. were focused on closing that westbound. Okay. 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 It's committee work that should be done in committee. It was supposed to be a report, really short. You call you got the question. Did we I'm like losing my mind here? Did we take let's take a look through this? Does Remember? anyone have questions about the resolution? Thank you. Any more than coffee myself. Okay. Call the question. Thank you. Second. Mimi, go. <laughs> You're not alone, Tammy. <laughs> All right, everybody. Any abstentions? Any recusals? Any opposed? Bob Townley votes no. All right. Thank you, Bob. Is that everybody? Isn't this the last resolution? No. no. Your last resolution is Mr. Tarkudian. Soon. All right. So, Darren, take us home. You are the resolution for. for... Good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight's resolution. Uh oh. Darren, we lost your audio. Hi. Oh, now, Sammy. You're, you're back. Thank you. Good evening. Um, this is the annual resolution that we passed renewing the street fair task force for another year um, and uh, next year we're going to look to uh, likely uh, submit the uh, uh, request for proposals for a, a few of the other um, street fair promoters. We did this, I think it was back in 2016 or 2017, and uh, I think that um, Joe Giovanni stepped up his game a little bit, the street fairs um, improved somewhat so i think it's time to go through this process again um early now ne sometime next year uh but this is this was this tonight's uh, resolution is to renew the street fair task force for another year so i'm happy to take any questions or comments uh if none uh let's move to the roll call vote call the question and second and no questions mimi take us home all right you can say some names say your name with your vote thanks Emma Russo. You there, Mark? All right. Um, blank. Blank, yes. Thank you. Brown Kennedy. Brown Kennedy, yes. Thank you. And Cameron? Cameron, yes. Thank you. And Cassell? Cassell, yes. Thank you. And I gotta make this window smaller. I'm really sorry, y'all. Can't can't see anything here. Um big. Just give me a moment. Uh Chang? Chang votes yes. Thank you. 
Chapman? Chapman votes yes. Thank you. Charcutian? Charcutian, yes. Thank you. And Cole? Cole votes yes. Thank you. Coleman? Coleman votes yes. Thank you. Corman? Corman, yes. Thank you. And Airman? Airman votes yes. Thank you. Flores? Flores, yes. Forsberg? Forsberg votes yes. And is very confused not having Flynn go before him anymore. <laughs> oh, sorry. I just don't, you know, I don't even mention myself anymore. Um, but you do. Thank you, actually, Forsberg, for reminding me because Flynn, you have to vote. Oh, I have to say what? Oh, I'm just like doing. Okay, yeah, yes. Oh, Flynn. Yes. I will okay, call for Forsberg, myself. yes. Yeah, sorry. I just like have a, a moment where I'm just like, whatever. All right, thank you. Um, learning here. Franker? Franker? Gone. All righty. Uh, Friedman? Friedman, yes. Roman? Roman, yes. All right. Galloway? Galloway, yes. Uh, Goldstein? Goldstein, yes. Grant? Grant, yes. Thank you. Gupta? Gupta votes yes. Thank you. James? James, yes. Thank you. Joyce? Joyce, yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Kay? Kay, yes. Thank you. Canel? Canel, yes. Thank you. Kettering? Kettering, yes. Thank you. Copel? Copel? I might be saying it real Texan too. Copel? No, he's Copel. Hmm. He's okay, Capel. Thank you. Um, but he's gone. gone. All right, uh, Lamory. Lamory, yes. Thanks, Mimi. Anytime. Lerner. Lerner, yes. Thank you. Lewinson. Lewinson, yes. Thank you. Lynn. Yes. Thank you. Mahoney. Mahoney, yes. Thanks. McHugh. McHugh. Meltzer. Meltzer votes yes, and Meltzer wants to take a second to say thank you, Mimi, for jumping into the fire and rocking it tonight. So keep going. Here, here. Appreciate it, everybody. Uh, more. More, yes. Thank you. Schneck. Schneck vote yes. Thank you. Star. Star yes. Thank you. Uh, Jimmy Song. Jimmy Song yes. Thank you. Vera Song. Vera yes. Thank you. Townley. Yes. Townley, Townley votes yes. All right. Thank you. And Z. Please correct me if I'm mispronouncing your name. Z. May have fallen off. All right. You. You vote yes. Thank you. Zelter. Zelter votes yes. Thanks. All right. And thank you very much. With that, do I get a motion to adjourn? Uh, Tammy, I I missed it. Amaruso's a yes. Thank you, Mark. I, oh, thanks, I Mark. stepped away for a moment. Motion to adjourn. Yes. Second, uh, Tammy. Second. I have a question about the fearless, the fearless uh, girl oh. vote. Did we announce that? No, uh, we didn't need to. It was thirty-one to thirteen. Motion passed. I didn't hear the count. Thank you. No worries. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, I believe that's the closing of our event at nine fifty-one. Again, 
please visit your committees. Please take your training. Enjoy the lovely options to educate your mind and your brevity is appreciated. Good night, and I'll Everyone. see you. <laughs> Thanks. Good night, all. Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.